Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. Today's game on KFJB TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Boy Scouts of America, Edward Jones, Agent Zach Wall, Amber's Retirement Community, Honest Heating and Cooling, Jensen Ford, Legends American Grill, Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown Community College, McGregor's Furniture Mattress, Pence Supplies and TV, Wayward Social, Zeno's, Wandering Creek, Wells Fargo Advisors, Laurel Diesel Services, Calvin Rocket, your Marshalltown High V. Central State Bank. Welcome to the Roundhouse. It is the Bobcats and the Bulldogs tonight on KFJB TV. Welcome in to our broadcast tonight on a Super Tuesday. He's Dylan Doze. I'm Brandon Lewis. Got a good one coming up for you tonight in a battle of the Conference of Champions Iowa Lions matchup as the Bulldogs come in. Two teams in different directions right yeah. now. Bobcats on a four-game losing streak. Meanwhile, for the Temple Bulldogs, they are 4-1 and one in the last five games. They've won their last couple of games, including take down the Burlington uh, Greyhounds. You know, so you look at them, two different directions. Yeah. If you're a Bobcat fan, you got to be feeling like we got to play our best game of the season here tonight. It really comes down to from the last, when we played Waterloo West a couple Friday nights ago, you and I agreed that was the best effort from beginning to end. Since that game, they have not put together a full game of effort over the last four. And last night, there's a couple little silver linings for a tough 6 4. Trey Brown is a double double machine. 19 points a game, 9 rebounds, stands 6 4. Bob Cats early in the year really struggled with that. Last night, even in a loss, they played 6 4. Preston Blanton, who's been really good of late for Peter Raps, Jefferson, and Rogelio Stern, locked him down. He had no points in that first half. Bobcats are going to have to do that again, that energy on the defensive side, and allow that energy to translate to the offensive end. And we just got to get the job done. Yeah, dealing with a few injuries here and there. Yep. Jacob Thiessen rolled his ankle the other night. He has since not gone. While you look at uh, Lamar Johnson, he's been sick. So a lot of things also kind of working against the Bobcats heading into this one. Yeah, we had already gone to about a six-man rotation. And then coach was like, all right, we're going to start putting in Jacob Hayes a little bit. Maybe, uh, maybe Lamar Johnson. And then you get an injury to JT. Six to still Laura. If Lamar's on the bench, I anticipate them going to seven tonight. Uh, but without Lamar out there, it's going to be the sophomore being the lone bench player here in Jake Hayes. So they've got to be efficient and knock down shots. We will have bonus coverage of the girls' game. So plenty of that coming up right around the corner. We take a quick timeout. Our exclusive KFJBT broadcast tonight. Hawkeyes are on the radio tonight. So thanks for joining us on KFJB TV. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and get upcoming game alerts. This is Bobcat Basketball You're watching KFJB TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Benjamin Marshall at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily 
a lunch special Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the topics. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Back at Sunday round Super Tuesday, coverage of the girls tonight, 7:20 to go in the basketball game. Cats are down by 10 as they're looking to kind of right the ship as well. Dylan. Yeah, they got it down 20 to 16 in the beginning of that third quarter, but it's been the same story kind of throughout the year. Got themselves down 13 to three and one. Have had the battle. It's been battle even since the can't get anything going. Need to execute on the offensive end here as a travel on Georgia Jensen, the sophomore. Well, turnover right there, and also the Bobcat ladies, 5-10, and ten, lost last night on the road at Cedar Rapids. Jefferson, what what did you see out of their game last night? There was, it, they scored the first bucket of the game, and then they just did not execute on the offensive end. Jefferson's speed and quickness was able to lock them down. Bobcats put a little bit of points on the board late, but they just go in these huge store scoring droughts. We're unable to get a bucket, and Jefferson was able to allow that lead to swell and really coast in the second half. Yes, down by 10 right now, and still holding a bucket. They have the basketball. It's Millie Heitman down here to Sydney Capello. You know, they've done, they've done a much better job breaking the press this season, but it's, again, it's still that thing with a young team with a lot of freshmen and sophomores where now, as you see right here on KBTV, what are we doing with the basketball from here on out? You've heard it over, so that's you know, one part of it, but getting that offense going. They have really struggled against the zone defense here tonight. People that normally don't shoot threes are shooting threes because they're open. They haven't post-fed or anything like that. Nice rebound by Sid. Aggressive right there, ripping that one away. I like the ball in her hands. I, we always talk off the air, but I think Sydney's best position is kind of that point forward, uh, being able to have the offense go through her on the offensive side. She just has good ball handler, good passer, good feel for the game. Nice drop in by Millie. And Hughes will lose it out of bounds on the baseline, but no, they say it's last actually off of the uh, Tema Bulldogs. I love those uh, uniforms for the Lays for Tema O-Town. Oh, they're, real, they're really nice. Have that white script on the slate gray. They look pretty slick. A little yeah. bit almost like Ohio State alts. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, looks like Hotman's going to pick up a foul on the baseline here. She was the inbounder and then cut in. I'm not sure. I didn't see if there was a collision there or what, but Coach Murphy is checking on the call right there. One of the things I've seen from the Bobcats in this most recent losing streak is early in the year, they on the defensive side were really strong. They were able to rebound the basketball. Recently, they've been out-rebounded by much smaller teams, and it seems to slow off their feet, not real quick. As you look at another unforced turnover by the Bobcats. Here's that last inbound play, and yeah, oh. hype and just kind of a little... Uh... Little run over right there. Hey, you like that aggressiveness for Heitman, though, as that's one thing that I know her mom uh, has encouraged uh, her to do so more often is use that aggressiveness out there on the basketball court. Breakaway for a tub one layup is no good, but the rebound and the putback can't get it to go right there. So the Bobcats helped by a Caldwell missed shot, and then Bowie back oh. down to the other end. She's going to hit oh the end line. And she hit the padding on the backboard, and, or excuse me, on the hoop, and she's going to go live for two shots here. A foul to come in on Caldwell, who missed the, the bunny inside. And so two shots here, Dylan. It's been a couple times we've seen where that whistle has been delayed a couple seconds, almost like they're waiting for someone else to make the call. She clearly was knocked down as Kinsley knocks down the first. Bobcats trying to claw their way back into this one. Yeah, down by nine. This is that. This is that real. That this is the the bewitching hour of a basketball yep. game. That you know that five to three minute stretch. Yep. Because in high school, with the shot clock and everything, you can work your way back in. But if you aren't within under ten, you know, with three minutes to go, your chances of really making a comeback not real great. 
And the Bobcats aren't like an experienced pressing team, so it's not like they can speed you up too much on the defensive end. They like to play it in the half court yep. and just bog you down. There you go. Good turnover for the Bobcats there as Long uses her long arms to help that one clear out to Capayu. This is where the Bobcats, you'd love to see them get a, a feed into that free throw line where Ellie Hughes is camping in. There they get it inside. That scoop and score by Boone. Can't finish off as it hits the bottom of the rack. Okay, Matumbo with the lead, settling in offensively as we approach the four-minute mark. Do you think the band O-Town sponsored the jerseys? Uh, no, the Ohio players. <laughs> but, uh, and I don't think uh, O-Town's probably playing some small roadside casinos now. <laughs> You're probably right. Uh, I was shouting out a very specific 40-year-old somebody out there for the MTV mm -hmm. Classic mm -hmm. out there. So <laughs> We appreciate that. Hey, I know my audience. <laughs> 4.02 to go in the fourth quarter. Bonus girls coverage on KFJB-TV. He's drops back, looks to pass. He's got him in the flat. That's Kate Ray makes the catch. He's up to midfield. He breaks away at the 40, 30, 20. 10 touchdown, Tate Ring, his second one of the night. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. Bobcats out of the huddle as they trail by nine in the fourth quarter. That timeout taken by the Otomo Bulldogs as they have the basketball. And it's interesting, this press has been, it's a 1-2-2 two, two press. We've seen it 100 times this year. Bobcats have broken it well, but then they've done lazy turnovers in the half court and have turned it over quite a bit more in that half court set, which is quite frustrating. Coach Murphy. Amara Johnson in the backcourt will look to get it over and just does in time with that shot clock. But Bowie didn't have a uh, heads up on a player coming in from behind. Got to have a little more talking right there, Dylan, right? You uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yep. Amara needs to be talking. That's her person running. You got to yell wolf, wolf, wolf or something. That's on the freshman. Howl? You could even howl? You can howl. You can make a clicking noise. You can uh, cackle? Yeah. yeah that, that. Uh, that's Is what that I do. Is that a cackle? Uh, I thought a cackle was more like an old smoker's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you can tell they're like three packs of cools in and they're laughing <laughs> at bingo. <laughs> that's what I think a cackle is. How many bingo cards are they playing? At least four. <laughs> at least four. <laughs> Minimum. Knock it down. Uh, inside, Long tried to go for the rebound and could pay you as that one uh, from long range straight on. And Frankie Long, her night's going to be over. That'll be foul number five on Frankie Long as in checks Georgia Jansen. So down by nine to a team. The Atembo Bulldogs are 11-2. Yeah. And you that know. shows a little bit when we don't know. Like, Atum was just always a hard school. Yes, they're in the Iowa Alliance South, but they're a very unique Iowa Alliance South team. Yeah, they because, go southeast with their games, like Burlington, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. You, they, it's the Metro schools and Atumwa, <laughs> and, it's, and it's just they're a unique one to themselves. In the draft, uh, Atumwa was picked last. Uh, <laughs> they, they were just forced to go where the <laughs> Iowa Alliance <laughs> told them. Uh, but... <laughs> We asked if a northern Missouri county wanted them, <laughs> and they, they denied. They denied, yes. But we love to have a Tum win the conference. I mean, we love that two-hour trip. Yeah, well, what's the over-under tonight that this makes it over two quarters? Because the last time we were in a mm -hmm. we only enjoyed 
two quarters. <laughs> Dylan. What are the betting odds? Can you tell my fans out there talking trash on their name. I'm, I'm not talking any trash. I'm stating <laughs> obvious. You know what I love about Atoma, and this is honest. Oh, all the hills. No, I, there's some cool stuff. The they bridge, have a Sonic. The bridge center is very cool, but yeah. it comes down to the Sonic. Yeah. It's definitely the Sonic, because yeah. when you get a win in Atoma, We have had Sonic. a lot of good memories in Atoma. Yes, we have. We almost got shot. That almost happened. My uh, wife uh, was very mad that I stayed in the press box after... And I was that like, was probably the same. <laughs> that's what, that's what we thought. <laughs> um, we go to Sonic if there's a win. Yeah, go to Sonic if there's a win, and it is uh, kind of a pretty town. Not in the winter. No, but I yeah, but, it's right but, on the river. You know, in the summertime, they've got a nice. Uh, what is it like a like a um, you know like a, a yeah, it's the British Center. Okay, yeah. So. We just picked up Nate Bergetzi tickets for our anniversary. Who is that? Comedian. He okay. was supposed to play the Bridge Center in October, but then SNL called and asked him to host. Oh, wow. So we had to uh, cancel, oh. and I have not seen him make a date. Oh. As the Bobcats turn it over again. Yeah. This is really – That's a guy forgetting about his fans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, man. Don't forget where you came from. Tell me what. <laughs> Radar O'Reilly. <laughs> Tom Arnold. Approaching two. Oh, hey, Tom Arnold, yeah. Guy's good. Uh, Tomwa, I think, isn't uh, Ragbri going through a Tomwa this year? It is. They just yeah. announced it yesterday. And Tom Arnold always does Ragbri. So here's the interesting thing about mm-hmm. Ragbri coming. Because in my day job, I know trending media pays me in large burlap sacks of cash these games, according to Jefferson AD. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but in my day job, I do tourism, and they say Ragbri is a tourism love it or hate it. Oh, yeah. It draws sure. a ton of traffic, but it also is like this giant footprint that overtakes. A community you know, people, for a whole year. People find a lot of reasons to complain about anything. Yeah. But people really complain about Ragbri. Ra- Ragbri is an interesting <laughs> one. And, and you know, you get different things. Like uh, they, their, their route last year, having Tama on the end of 90 miles. <laughs> yeah. During, that was a lot of people skip on that. One of the hottest the, days of the year. A lot of people skip that route. So the community did all these things. A lot of riders skip that day, Oof. so they put a year of effort in. So stuff like that can happen on Rag Ride. Sounds like my life. Put a year of effort <laughs> into something and get nothing in return. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this man will have a baby sometime. Well, no, I was not <laughs> alluding to my child. Okay, uh, that's good. I'm just, I'm just meaning like, you know. There's been maybe certain times in my career, yes. you know. Yeah. You what, did really I, hard. what did I get? I mean, I, I got a paycheck, I suppose. 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Zero star review. <laughs> 30 to 19. Bob at down at home inside the roundhouse as they will drop to 5 and 11 with a loss here tonight. Uh, Temple Bulldogs will improve to 12 and 2. And this really comes for the Bobcats. They have struggled in the offense in the half court set. And that's just, and especially against this zone, because the zone lulls you into, the zone does a great job of lulling you into this idea of productivity that you're passing the ball, but you're not actually doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. And then you end up settling for bad shots or getting lazy with your passes. Bobcats have really struggled with that as Amara Johnson picks up a foul hand check. I've worked with some people like that in my past, you know what I mean, where they're faking it like they're working really is that what you're talking about? Uh, it's it's not sort that of along fa- the- <laughs> It's that they're faking it so well that they think they're working hard. They're not projecting. They're not trying to fool anybody. They have fooled themselves. Zach's as our very to own Zach Tomish points to himself. No, I was not talking about you, Zach. But uh, you know, the first the first step in any problem identification is you know admitting you have a problem. Yep, that is true. As Bobcats yeah. down by a dozen. Yeah, uh, that's uh, one of the things I had the joy of hanging out with Zach today on Central mm-hmm. Iowa today on KFGB. Yeah, we appreciate you for stopping in and leaving notes for people. That's right. Atemo with an easy layup right there as Fuller 
the junior at 5-6, stole it and took it all the way in to put the Bulldogs up 33-19. to And another pick, and they're going to pull it back out as Baroma, the sophomore, Leah Baroma, will dribble this thing out. A shot clock is off as the time ticks down on this one with our final score looking like it's going to be 33-19 to as the Bobcats will fall on their home floor. A little bit of a rough stretch for the boys and girls right now. And uh, trying to get right here tonight against a, a pretty good Bulldog team was a, a tough challenge, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, it really is. Girls girls played hard. It comes down to what it has. Can you execute in the half court? Offense, the offense has definitely trailed the defense. Yeah. And can you keep the turnovers on 20? And that just hasn't been... Haven't been able to do that this year, and that's why we sit at 5 and 11 and why Otumwa here tonight goes to 12 and 2. Yeah. Bob and Lee will be back in action on Friday night on the road at Fort Dodge, and that's a Fort Dodge team that's improving. It is, a, it is an improving Fort Dodge team, but it's also in the first matchup. Bobcats were right with them except for the turnovers in that press. Yeah. And I feel like a broken record, you can change the name, and it's the same thing. They really played them well from quarter two on, but that first quarter, Fort Dodge jumped all over us, and we had to claw our trying to get back in it and just could never get over the hump. Well, we are going to count you down to tip off of the boys' game coming up right around the corner. We'll take a quick tab out. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same, and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today. Our friend team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Conference of Champions, let's take a look around the action tonight, Dylan. We have Ames is at home against Des Moines Hoover. Fort Dodge is getting ready for the Bobcats on Friday by taking on North tonight. Mason City hosts Des Moines Roosevelt. Waterloo East tries to get off the ground after losing to Fort Dodge as they take on Des Moines Lincoln and then West Marshall's at Green County, er, hosting Green County and then East Marshall goes to Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Of course, we are not on the radio side tonight, just exclusively on KFJB TV, so we are corn starless here tonight as Jeff Brooks back at the radio studio is not there tonight. He is hanging out with his wife and children. Yeah, that's why he was GQ's father of the year. I heard that news last night on that, the broadcast. It's, it's that fantastic. Was well deserved. It is. A long time coming for Brooks, that is for sure. It is now time for our keys to the game here tonight, Dylan, for the Bobcats and the Bulldogs. All right, we're on a four-game skid. You've heard the negatives. Well, let's look at the silver lining. We have talked all about Kyle Smith will be a very good three, three-level scorer in the outside and in between. He's settled for the three a lot, but last night he he was able to take it off the bounce, get a floater, a couple times pump fake and go, even did some back cuts. I think that is really growing in his game and encouraged him to continue to do that. So that's a silver lining. And in the fourth quarter, the first seven and a half minutes, Bob gave up one point. So they really locked in there. And then a tumult comes down to have the best tray. If have the best day. Have the best. If they have the best Trey, they're going to have the best day because Trey Brown, 6'4", 19 points a game. Believe he, I believe his nine rebounds lead the Iowa Alliance, and he can be a real big problem for the Bobcats. Bobcats have done a better job in the post. Trey Brooks was not good last night. He'd be the first to tell you that. So if their Trey Brown is better than our Trey Brooks, Atoma's going to be in this. That is for sure. We are counting you down to tip off when we come back. We will have our 
Pre-game chat with head coach Mike Apple, all brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling, building relationships one customer at a time. This is the countdown to tip-off. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level, all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. Become a Tiger for life. Visit ncc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Scouts in Marshalltown go on fun adventures. Scouts learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn character building. Scouts learn citizenship. Scouts learn life skills. Scouts learn to be leaders. Scouts go to fun summer camps, and scouts get a head start in life. Marshalltown has produced over 200 Eagle Scouts in our over 70-year history and have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community. To learn more about doing scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on! Welcome back into the countdown to tip off here on KFJB TV. Our pregame chat with Coach All brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling in Marshalltown. Joined now by Head Coach Mike Apple. Coach, you know, last night after the game, a loss uh, by, by 12 on the road, you mentioned kind of intent by your players. 24 hours later, what's that intent look like for you heading into this one with your looking to, to get off the schneid when the losing streak? Well, nothing's really changed, to be honest, in 24 hours. It's just a mindset that they have to have to be ready to play a game. You know, we, we're doing the same stuff as far as preparing and, and being ready for games. So it's just a matter of if they want to do it or not. Um, you know, and, and uh, that's just that's kind of the story here is, is uh, during pregame was, hey, let's be ready to play. Let's go. Let's not take this for granted. Yeah. Always a, a good message. I remember thinking back to when I was younger, you do take things for granted. You don't really realize maybe the big picture. I know it's mentoring month. It's a good month to kind of remind yourself probably why you coach, why you got into coaching, that kind of thing. How important is it to be a leader of young men for you? It's huge, you know. Uh, you do When you're going through uh, kind of a rough spot like this, you got to do some self-reflecting. And, you know, there was a moment today I just thought about it, and it's like there's a lot more to this than just basketball. Uh, you know, basketball is, is pretty small in the grand scheme of things for a lot of these kids. You know, they're going to play it in high school, and that's it. So, you know, how do you make an impact in their lives through the game of basketball, of course, but it's just much more than that. It really is a, about that. And, and I know there's some things that you've shared with me about your program over the years that, you know, we won't, we won't share or we don't share on the broadcast, but I know that you really care about these kids deep down at, at the end of the day. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing is that, Throughout all the, the high school coaches that we have here at Marshalltown, each and every one of them, I get the feeling that, you know, you really do care, wins or losses aside. Absolutely. You know, and then there's a lot of life lessons that come with, 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 uh, with being on a basketball team, you know, how to be a good teammate, you know, how to have discipline and, and, and show up every day, you know, uh, compassion, you know, there's so many things um, that, that are come through it and, you know, be here be, you know teaching at the high school you know i always say my door is always open if you ever need to come talk to me and um just building those relationships is huge like i said just more than basketball you know helping guide them through whatever they want to do next after high school 
you know, the one thing about high school sports, uh, you know, and I look, I, I think about that too. Like the self-reflection is such a, such a huge thing because how do you respond to losses, right? I mean, I, I feel like uh, some of the the highest level athletes. I know a lot of people aren't Tom Brady fans, but. That guy lost a lot of games before he won, too. I know he won pretty early. But, you know, the point is is that, you know, you can learn a lot from your losses just as much as you, maybe even more than your wins. No, absolutely, yeah. You're going to always take take uh, things from, you know, whether you win or lose each game. And, um, you know, there's, there's lessons in all of it. And uh, hopefully it makes us hungry and, and want to be ready to play for this next game. You know, playing last night, obviously that's a quick turnaround. Uh, hopefully it's fresh in their minds and we're ready to play. Your opponent tonight, the Atelmo Bulldogs, boy, they have quite a turnaround. They only bring back two guys from last year's team, but in Pope and, and uh, Trey Brown, uh, those, those two guys were pivotal pieces last year, and they're the focus this year. I tell you what, those, those two are really good, you know, and that's a huge emphasis for us is, is stopping them and making it hard for them tonight. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a one-two punch where, you know, Pope's more of the guard and, 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 and Brown is going to try and hurt you inside. and. Uh, they do a really good job of finding them, and, and they take you know majority of their shots. So uh, we got to be ready to kind of stop those two guys, and then of course not to let other guys hurt us either. You know, I know you mentioned it's so big, uh, just controlling yourself. So what's your what's your key to victory tonight for the Bobcats? What do they have to do well to come out on top? Just do do you know play consistently hard, understand what we're doing. No matter if we're making or missing shots, is that can't change our impact what we're doing defensively, obviously, and staying focused in the game. You know, it'd be nice to see the shot, you know, some shots go in tonight. Um, so we're, we're really focusing on that, being confident, understanding when we want to take shots, taking good shots, and it'll work out for us if we do that. Good luck tonight. Yeah, thank you. All right, that is head coach Mike Apple. That's our pregame chat, all brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodel. When we come back, we will check out tonight's start at five for the Cats and the Dogs right here on KFJB TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodels. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. With over 10,000 cars at our disposal, Jensen Ford... Hold on. That's not really how we do things at Jensen Ford. How about... It's never been a better time to buy a brand new... Um, yeah, we don't really do that either. When you're ready to buy a car, we'll be ready to help. Try this. We'll get you in and out faster than a speeding... We don't do that either. At Jensen Ford, we'll take as much time as you need to find the right vehicle. We're not just moving cars, but we're building relationships. Oh, maybe more of a... This is where your family buys their vehicles. There you go. More like that. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. Quality furniture for every room in your home. Pence Appliance and TV. For sales and service of everything appliance, come see the Pence team. Wayward Social. The place for bowling, games, food, and more. Wells Fargo Advisors. Marshalltown. Sports Plus. Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, sportsplustherapy.com. It's the countdown to tip off on KFJB TV Super Tuesday. Let's get you tonight's starting lineups. I brought to you by Sam Vic Enterprises in Marshalltown. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you the starting lineup. All right, first off for Neil Hartz and the Atemo Bulldogs. They are 8 and 4, 3 and 4 out of the Iowa Alliance Conference south side of things. As really, uh, Pope and Brown, their two returners, was touched on with Coach there. Those two guys that were there for that 6-16 six and 16 team a year ago. They are really the, the go-getters. Rasha Pope, number two, will get the start tonight, averaging 14 points per game, 4.8 rebounds per game, three assists. He had seven points, four rebounds in this matchup a year ago. He is a senior this year at six foot and a guard and a, a really good player. Yeah, I... Not only does he have one of the best names in the conference, he's a lone yeah. senior on that starting lineup. I really think you know Trey Brown's going to be great. Can Rasha Pope averages 12 points a game? Can he be up in that 15-16, give them that little extra boost? And if they can do that, Atum was going to continue their winning ways. Chase Thompson, number 10, averaging 7.8 points per game, a 6'1 junior. Nehemiah Wolfing, number 12, 8.2 points per game, 
as he is a six-foot sophomore. Parker Derby, number 22, 6'2", junior, averaging five rebounds per game at a Ford. And like uh, Dylan alluded to, Trey Brown, 24, he is averaging 18.8 points per game, nine rebounds per game, uh, just over two steals and two assists per game. A 6'4", junior, 15 points, six rebounds, four steals against Marshalltown in this matchup a year ago. So that's yeah. the lineup for the Bulldogs as they get our 8-4 coming off a win last night at Des Moines East. For your Marshalltown Bobcats behind six-year head man, Mike Apple, who got a fresh cut overnight as he's looking to turn things around his team on a four-game losing streak as they gave up just one point in the fourth quarter. They'll have to be stout defensively here tonight. Goes like this, Carter Giannetto, number one, 5'10 senior, committed to play at Simpson, a guard, averaging eight points per game. Trayshawn Brooks, number three, averaging just shy of 11 points per game. Four and a half rebounds and four assists a game, a 6'1 senior. Number 10, Kyle Smith, 14 points per game, 6.7 rebounds per game. He is 37% from three-point land, still one of the best three-point shooters in the state of Iowa in Class 4. Or a, I haven't looked since uh, last Friday, but stat-wise, overall, I believe he's still uh, number one in 4A in three-pointers made. And he did knock down three second-half threes last, last night. night yep. So struggling to shoot it, but still getting some to go. Number 11, Corey Smith, his brother, 6'1", senior, 12 points last night for the Bobcats. And number 24, Rahelio Sarin, 4 points per game, 3.5 rebounds per game, 6'1", senior, heart, hustle, and muscle. He was the epitome of that last night, Dylan. He brought all the energy. I was talking with the coaching staff. If we would have had three rows last night, we would have stopped a three-game losing streak. He was dynamic, held Preston Blanchett, ended up having eight points, but he had no points in that first half. Jefferson's leading scorer. That is our Sandvik starting lineups. Again, Sandvik, Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you those starting lineups. It is Super Tuesday inside the Roundhouse. It's a battle of the dogs and the cats. Tip-off is next right here on your home for the cats, KFJB-TV. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh ready lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American Grill in Marshalltown. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. Super Tuesday on KFJB TV. He's Dylan Dose. I'm Brandon Lewis. Our producer on site, Zach Tobish, Jesse Meyer, Keith Stewart is on camera work here tonight. Bobcats try to get off the schneid. A four-game losing streak coming into this one against their foes from down south in the Atelma Bulldogs in an Iowa Lions conference matchup here tonight. Coach Apple looking fresh with the new cut. He's assisted by Brenner Brynjensen. Those coaches... I feel like have to feel lucky that you're turning this around in less than 24 hours, right? Flush last night, a loss on the road, 52-40. to 40. You've lost two games in a row to teams with a combined win total of three games. So you really have to block that out and treat tonight like a new night. I think you're ready to flush it, and you're also happy that you're at home. It's a Tuesday night, friendly faces at the roundhouse. It's a gym that you're used to shooting shooting at. I anticipate Bobcats coming out strong, especially number three, Trey Brooks, who was outplayed by a Don, by Avonis Hodges last night from the get-go. I think Trey will get mad and look real good here tonight. Final lineups being announced as the lights turn back on inside the roundhouse. 
It is a friendly crowd tonight as I talk with Tom Kurth. Big shout out to him. Former Bobcat himself on uh, one of the state championship teams. And uh, just a lot of Bobcat pride. Yep. Always love that in the community. We've heard a lot of really great things about our coverage, so we appreciate that as we work hard to uh, deliver the best for Bobcat Athletics. It really is a great joy to be able to be a part of this, you know, get to see a lot of these student athletes and get to talk to parents after the athletes leave, graduate, have gone on to college, see yep. checking in. Uh, so we always appreciate when we see you out and about talking about the Bobcats. Trey Brown will swipe at it, but Corey Smith wins it for the Bobcats. We are underway as the dumb one. They're great tops and bottoms taking on the Bobcats in their white home uniforms. Bobcats written across the front. Nice pass. Rahelio Sarin finds his teammate Treshawn Brooks to open up the game. That's the third game in a row. They've gone with that high pick and and Trey dives to the basket, and it's worked all three times. And it's put the Bobcats cutting into the lane more and more. Ah, a bump by Treshawn Brooks. He's going to pick up his first foul tonight. Nehemiah Wolfing was the one who was fouled right there. Is that team foul number one of the night? Bobcats are going to be in man to man. Inbound to Brown. He's definitely. Uh, Filled out a little bit, you know. He he looks a little like he's he's been hitting the weight room. Yeah, and can do that to you right there as he backs down Rahelio Sarin off the glass for two and a free throw to come. Feels like he goes around and just says, "Do you even lift, bro?" He's got he's <laughs> got the Hulk Hogan arms. I know. I know Rahelio lifts. He definitely does. Trey's 6'4", and one of the things Bobcats have done is they've been able to better defend in the post is bringing that second defender too late on that one. Trey Brown able to get into his drop step and able to finish the three-point play. All right, so he rattles in the free throw as on the season, Trey Brown, a 78% free throw shooter, a 6'4", junior. And last year's sophomore, 15 points against the Bobcats. Again, backdoor play to Treshawn Brooks. Almost hit it right there, but he lost the basketball. Gathers it back in. And out of Giannetto, right high post. He loses the basketball. Turnover, Bobcats. That's one thing that we've seen that turnover category creep up every now and then as Bobcats now averaging 11 turnovers per game coming into this one. Thompson hits the deck. He gets back up. Brown, top of the key, guarded by Sarin. Brown nice. almost had his pocket pick right there by Kyle Smith. They've done a better job of bringing that second defender, not to allow the post to just, uh, go one-on-one -on -one from 12 feet out. And Brown against Sarin again and beats him with a quick, smooth move. That's a good one for a junior right there. He is all five of Atumwood's points here as we are a minute and a half gone in the first quarter. One thing Bobcat defenders are going to have to notice, he's always going to spin back. He, he's not going to go straight at you, straight up. He's always going to spin back, so that help's got to come from that side. Giannetto open for a three. Can't knock it down. It rattles in and out. Two Bobcats go after it, but they see Rasha Pope tip that one out of there. It'll stay with the red and blue. Bobcats looking. Uh, Kyle Smith is going to inbound it underneath the hoop. Bobcats have gotten a lot of quick buckets out of these sets. Smith looking and looking and finally has to just throw it near the midcourt line to Giannetto. And here in the zone, this Bobcats have struggled so mightily against two, three zones, just have not had intention or been able to get it into the short corner. Kyle Smith, far side corner, cross court pack, pass picked off by Pope. It is a one on two and he exploits it as Pope powers pass. Treshawn Brooks for two. His first bucket of the game as Pope comes, comes in, averaging 14 points per game. And here comes Treshawn Brooks into the front court. Three games in a row just from the get-go, getting down early. I would not be surprised if Coach Apple's quicker with the timeouts here tonight. And another pick, Kyle Smith, back-to-back -back turnovers. A one-on-one, -on -one and Pope again to the rack strong. And four points for Pope. It's 9-2. Timeout on the floor, 5-14. Dogs have the Cats rattled.
Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. My name is Carter Gianetto, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 514, opening quarter, 9 2. Off to a rough start. Timeout there by head coach Apple. What are you thinking? When you're looking at the defensive side, the effort's not there. A lot of careless turnovers, but this 2 3 zone has just really hampered the Bobcats. A lot of stagnant. A lot of slow plotting offense. It's no good. Treshawn Brooks attacks, try to go up and under, misses the shot, poke it around quickly up to Wolfing. Wolfing puts it up, misses the shot, a put back by Brown. That one's missed in an offensive rebound by Derby. Kick out back top of the key. Pope wide open. Boom. That is an early big shot right there to extend it to 10 point lead in that one. Makes you feel a little deflated right there. Bobcats have been beat quite a bit on the offensive glass. Last night in the fourth quarter, Ernest Smith just destroyed any hope Bobcats had of getting back in it by offensive board, offensive board, and offensive board. So far, if the Bobcats aren't turning the ball over, they're giving up offensive rebounds, and that's a recipe for disaster. Lack of confidence? It's a lack of focus. It's a lack of intensity. Bunny is made inside by Corey Smith for two. 12 for the score. That's one thing that Corey's done really well since the calendar's turned to 2024, Dylan. He's really scored it inside at a rate of now. Trayvon Brooks picks the pocket of Pope and takes it all the way for two. And there you go. You get a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of swag to you. Bobcats. Though they've fallen behind a couple games in a row pretty quickly, they battled back consistently. Brown on the right wing, high points of basketball, now dribbles to the top of the key, looking for Pope, back door, and Giannetto's going to be called with a hold. And he didn't need it because that pass was way late on the back cut. It was about a second and a half too late. Looking at that last replay from Treshawn Brooks. He picked that pocket and took it all the way in. So the foul on Giannetto, his first of the nights. Pope has the basketball bounce to him, feeds it into Brown, and now Raheleo Saren's going to pick up a push from behind. Yeah, uh, looking at this ref crew from the first game, there's not going to be a lot of bumping that they're going to allow. They're going to have to play pretty straight up, which is with Rowe already in his second foul, that's tough. Yeah, and the sophomore checked in, Jacob Hayes. You know, and that's one thing is is Jacob is still developing. He's still playing at the JV level. And, and when he gets into uh, varsity minutes like this, Brown's going to attack him and go right at him. And we've seen Jacob Hayes, unfortunately, struggle guarding down low in the paint and, and shutting down those big guys to maybe have a year or two more development than, than he has. Yeah, Hayes is 6'2", as Corey gets another bucket. Hayes is 6'2", but he plays much more like a guard, and you're going to have to bring a second defender to be able to stop Brown. 3-20, first quarter. Cats all the way back into this one, down 14-8. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. This is Galel Joy. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Bobcats out of the timeout. 3.20 to go in the first quarter. 14 to 8. As an interesting first quarter here as the uh, Bulldogs went up 12 to 4, right? Yeah, they went and up 12-4. Bobcats have been able to get a steal here and there, but getting back in, this is all going to come yeah. from the defensive side. Bobcats did that late last night, but it was a little too, little too late situation and a 52 to 40 loss to Cedar Rapids Jefferson Brown 
backing down again. A late feed, right block, hanging out. Derby pops it in from the right block off the glass for two. And that's where I don't know how you can bring the double from right in his face. That was an easy drop off there. Corey Smith, right wing, passes left wing. Kyle Smith, boom, knocks that one down left wing. Kyle Smith, three threes made last night. Best three-point shot maker in Class 4A coming into this action. Yeah, Bobcats, this is a nice surprise. Last night they were 0 for 10 behind the arc in the first half. Brown, a slow drive down the left side of the paint, kicks out. They feed it back into Brown as a travel will be called. Turnover on the Atomo Bulldogs with 2.16 in the opening quarter. A quick substitution will be made. Checking in for the Atomo Bulldogs, Matt Mitchell. He checks in as uh, checking out was Maya Wolfen. Kyle Smith drives, kicks. Now Corey Smith, the drive baseline, pulls up just outside the left block, knocks down the shot. And just like that, Dylan, Bobcats back within three. Corey does such a nice job staying in balance, rising up, hitting that mid-range. But that all happened because Kyle took it off the bounce and just kicked off. Nice pump fake, made a play for his brother. Student section clapping on with the Temple Bulldogs in the front court. Pope way out high. Giannetto guards. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Fires a three and knocks it down from the right wing. And Bobcats had a whole lot of problems with Ivanis Hodges in that first quarter, giving up eight to their point guard at Jefferson. Tonight, Pope already has ten. He's been a problem. Six of those ten points coming from two threes. And we talked about early, can he go? Raises 12 points a game to 15 16. So far, so good. Good drive by Giannetto. That's the jump down near side. And Giannetto, his first bucket of the night, draws him back within four. Pope backdoor play. Good cuts. And Derby with another bucket. He has four. Kyle caught pressuring too far on the top side. And Derby just. Takes it to the races on the back cut. Easy deuce. Matt Mitchell's going to pick up a foul as it's he a was double going. foul. It's a double foul as a Matt Mitchell play. was guarding there as we see Giannato's last made bucket. But uh, yeah, Matt Mitchell and Kyle Smith both pick up a foul. That's a fourth team foul with 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. Shot clock at 22, so a tumble. Most likely, unless an offensive rebound, we'll have another possession before we close out the quarter. I abhor a double foul. Dumb. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Blocking foul on a drive is Treshawn Brooks. It seems like the player's not a big fan of the tight whistle. No, and we saw it all throughout that first game. It is a tight whistle. Almost as if they want you to know that they know the entire playbook or all the, the rule book. And probably more they want you to know they're here in presence. And account. I mean they didn't they didn't they didn't uh you know show up. I mean they showed up to earn a paycheck, but you That's know right. they're gonna they're gonna earn that. They are you know, it's uh I do appreciate somebody wanting to put in a good day's work. That is true, you know. A lot wants to be said about hard work these days. Yes. Well, we talked about it off the air is that, you know, there's always people that feel like they're, they've they uh, definitely confused themselves thinking that they're actually working hard but accomplishing nothing. Not saying that's true here tonight. What are you saying? Uh, I am saying <laughs> I'm, I also am not the biggest fan of the very tight whistle on both ends. That is true. That is true. But yeah, just uh, real I quick. think we're yeah, I think we're looking at uh, possibly a substitution, maybe a number not right in the book. If so, we'd have a technical foul. We and had that a couple times last, last year. year. It yeah. was, and it happened at home both times. Officials going to go down to talk to head coach Mike Apple, and now, now they're questioning a hold. I think the double foul. And this is, it's pretty animated. 
uh, between the the ref there, and of course we don't get the names, uh, but the ref and Coach Apple. Coach Apple's pretty furious with the double call foul. Neil Hartz also maybe um, expressing a little displeasure here too. Nobody, uh, nobody loves the double foul. I don't think you could talk to anybody in America that both kids get a foul. It's a kiss your sister thing. Nothing changes. <laughs> It's a really terrible scenario. Didn't have that on my bingo card tonight, Dylan. Corey Smith, pull up off the inbound, knocks it down right there. Corey Smith off to a nice start. He has eight in the first quarter. It's 21-17, 10 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Tumble Bulldogs with the basketball. Pope out high, guarded by, oh, good backdoor cut. Derby knocks it down off the glass, and that's how we head to the second quarter as it's 23-17, Cats trail at home. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat Nation, it's Jacob Hayes. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Welcome back inside the Roundhouse. Top for a scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. All right now, Valley and uh, Prairie matching up in girls basketball. Valley is up 36-23. to 23 As uh, we don't have our hardworking Jeff Brooks back in the studio like we normally do. So the score is not uh, a plenty. Uh, do have a basketball game. Council Bluffs. Jefferson is leading Council Bluffs Lincoln. In case you're wondering what's going on in the western portion of the state, 36 to 25. But that's that's it. It's a barren land out there of scores. It is. It's it's like Central Australia out there. There's red clay and kangaroos. That's all we got here in scoreboard updates. Uh, Temple Bulldogs with a basketball to start up the second quarter as they lead it 23-17. to Pope with six points, just knocked down the last bucket of the first quarter. And I would drive in from the right wing, throw it up a shot. It is no good. Tops it off the mark right there. Bobcats with a rebound. Clear out to Trayshawn Brooks as he'll come up the near side and over the Bobcat logo at midcourt. Bobcats have been pretty efficient offensively in the second half of that first half. That mid-range, they found a lot of things that they liked. Kyle Smith, uh, dish out to the right wing to Giannetto. Giannetto looking. Not a lot of inside game. Corey Smith has had some nice buckets inside, but here's a three for Giannetto. He can't knock that down, and just as I say that, good inside presence by Kyle Smith getting the rebound and the putback in his second bucket of the night. He has five. One thing Kyle has done, even with shooting woes, is rebound the ball at a high rate. Almost seven rebounds a game for the sophomore. Treshawn Brooks guarding on Mitchell. As they swing it to Pope right wing, now a handoff right wing. Thompson, we're going to drop it into Brown. He does. And a spin around move, no good. That was blocked. I think Hayes got a handoff. I got a piece of that. Kyle Smith back out. You know who Brown reminds me of? Who's that? Uh, I think, what was his name? Trace Jackson Davis or whatever yes. for Indiana. Same haircut, same biceps. Stop. Yes, yeah. But similar play a little bit. Similar game, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he always used that spin move inside a lot. Trayshawn fakes, spins, kicks out. Now Giannato drives, kicks back out. Trayshawn attacks in, and we're going to see a hold on the floor. Yeah, they're going to call it, I think, on 10. See Chase Thompson. Yep. So Thompson picks up his second foul of the night. 6-10 in the second quarter of play. As we have plenty of whistles here tonight. And at first they said two shots, but he thought there was five team fouls. So we just got into that second quarter. So after a quick chat with the one, it's going to be inbounds underneath. Giannetto. Free throw line, kick out Kyle Smith. Force a three off the front of the iron. Kyle Smith couldn't hit that one, but Corey Smith went for the rebound. Beat out. A tough one now in transition. Pope will set a screen. 
Wolfing dribbles. And now back to Pope. Free throw line. Quick jumper. The southpaw That's knocks correct. it down for two. He's really got a nice shooter's touch. Yeah, allowing him, he's almost to where you can't. Are they going to get a technical? I, I oh think it's a warning on Coach Apple. This is not being in the box. Oh hey, my this gosh. is this is stuff that we need to not be worrying about. This is nickel and dime garbage. It just it's not affecting the game whatsoever, and there goes a technical. Yeah, yeah. This is ridiculous. It's back to back nights. Coach Apple has picked up a tech. I don't think I've ever said that in my entire career. No. No. And this is where you get to different points where it seems like really thin skin and the fact it's just yeah. ridiculousness. Nobody's here to watch them, and it's not. And the play isn't affecting the game. They've decided to take over the game. Brown will head to the line for two free throws. 78% free throw shooter. He's already knocked down one tonight. And that one will rattle in and out. Student section really fire up now. I wonder why, Dylan. I think it's uh, someone uh, standing right in front of them with hands on his hips <laughs> and trying to hold on to his follicles. Brown knocks down the second one. Bobcats have done a nice job on Brown since he got going early. So he picks up his eighth point after seven in the first. It'll be a demo of basketball out of the free throws for the technical fouls. We usually see Coach Apple never sit down during a game, and he is currently sitting. Well, he was uh, he was allowed almost like when you get a dog and put it out on a leash. Is like out in the yard, you get to go about five feet. Just ridiculous. Oh my gosh, we're going to be here till Wednesday. I got plans tomorrow. <laughs> I got plans for you. Oh. 529 to go in the second quarter. That foul on Jacob Hayes inbound. Corey Smith almost knocked that away, but Atelma will keep it. Pope way out high. Gives to Brown. He'll drive. A rich in. That ball knocked away by Corey Smith, but Brown did a great job to keep his grasp on it and finishes off with the rack for two. It's 28 to 19. Bobcats find themselves down big so far. Need to battle back in this. Get some stop on defense and need to knock down some shots. Treshawn Brooks pull up. Free throw line. Can't hit it. Kyle Smith went for the rebound. Wolfing beat him out for it. And he'll bring it up the far sideline. Against that zone, one pass and an 18-foot contested jumper is awful offense. Pope kicks right, goes left, and spins up with the left hand, misses the shot. It's tapped out to the top. They'll reset. Wolfing with it, guarded by Brooks. Out of Brown, top of the key. Fakes right, he goes left as well. Now spin move and a late dump up to Derby. And Derby... That's really all he does. He finds a spot where there is nobody defensively, and he's beat the Bobcats for eight points. Done a really nice job on the Bobcats bring that second defender. Derby's made himself available for a buck and also back cut a couple for easy layups. Corey Smith spins, loses the basketball, gathers it back in, drives. Turnaround jumper comes up short just outside the right block. Open transition, he lost the basketball, and now to Brown, they'll set up the offense. Pope flashes in the lane, a miscue offensively, and a turnover on the Bulldogs. 3.51 to go, second quarter. Bobcats look really, the the jury, you know, the jury's in on it. If you play that 2-3 zone and you force a little bit of just the stagnation on offense, as it now looks like, Actually, they've switched it up to a man. Forcing a three right there. That had a hand in his face. It looked like uh, Javen Rominger, who's checked in. A pretty good wide receiver on the football team. 
Got in the way of that one as Pope with the basketball into the front court. Wolfing leans in against Treshawn Brooks, who's guarding. Picks up his dribble. Now back out to Brown in the right wing. Five, Five seconds. Yeah, on the shot clock, you and I both saw it. Now a rip away and a tie-up. Jump ball. Possession arrow. Bob basketball. Under three to go in the second quarter. 30-19 to 19 the score. Good tie-up right there. Corey came in with the help, was able to hold that up. Bob Cats looking to get the Bulldog lead back under 10 with this possession. Corey Smith, three, oh, it rattles out and spins around off left. Brown with a rebound. Pope gets the clear outs. Some of that comes just with the lack of rotation on the ball that Corey, Corey shoots. It doesn't slide clean off the rim, just kind of rolls around there. Pope gets a handoff from Wolfing. Pope crossover. Feeds back behind. Mitchell, three, is knocked down. This is a kick in, folks. Bobcats not ready to play and getting run out of their own gym. In transition, Brooks, left-handed layup as he motors past a couple of Bulldogs. Yeah, that middle of the lane's wide open. But got to get stopped. Bobcats are going to have to win this end of the floor. They're on pace to almost give up 80 here tonight. Pope, pocket pick. Good play by Kyle Smith. Three in transition. Can't hit it. Corey Smith skies. He jumped a little bit too soon as Raman got the rebound. Now another steal, but the Bobcats throw it away themselves. Man, oh man, Bobcats cannot catch a break. Kyle Smith averaging nearly two steals a game has already come up with a couple of here tonight, but the Bobcats... Looking for some transition points. Can't get a bucket. Yeah, looking. Sometimes you make your own breaks, and the Bobcats have not done that. When they get something good, it goes bad. Bounce pass to the top of the key. As Wolfing not able to contain that one. Now Pope with it. Ginetto guarded. That's a push off. Yeah, a little bit of a bump right there at the free throw line. Rominger has it. And now Pope with a long three. Kyle Smith with the rebound. And they say shot clock violation. And officials time out after that. Yes. Yes, I thought we were going to see a shot. I thought the shot clock was at like 10 or so. But officials time out as a player with uh, blood. Bloody nose as Matt Mitchell getting checked out by Avery, the Bobcat trader. And so they'll check him out as the Bobcats will keep the basketball with 52 seconds to go before halftime. And you like to see with 35 second shot clock, if you got something early, want to play for two for one. Usually coach doesn't do that, but there might be an yeah. opportunity to do so. How come it seems like the NBA is the only place that does a two for one? Because college doesn't even really do it. I think it's kind of a missed opportunity. Is three off the back of the iron is missed, but Kyle Smith, or excuse me, Corey Smith gets the rebound. Pops it out to Kyle Smith, but it picked off. Thompson has it. He'll take it one-on-one -on -one against Trey Sean Brooks. Brooks hits the deck. Hard fall right there as Thompson went underneath of him. It's going to be a foul on Treshawn Brooks. As he gives a point to the bench like he's okay, that'll be number two on Treshawn Brooks. Pretty good attack by Chase Thompson, but a tough fall for Treshawn. Yeah, came down to a careless pass, another turnover from the Bobcats. It's just been very sloppy with the basketball. Chase Thompson at the line, two free throws, a 73% free throw shooter on the season. As he knocks down that first one, extending the lead to 13. Bob Katz will have the final possession of the half. And 
second one, nothing but net. Substitution for the shooter. Checking in Rasha Pope. This is where there's not much on the bench. A little surprised we haven't seen Lamar play at all tonight. But there is just no gas in the tank. This is the third game in five days. And it just doesn't seem there's a whole lot of energy by the Bobcats here tonight. Giannetta left wing. Treshawn, he'll speed it ahead. And that one will go for Treshawn as it rings around. Atelma throws away the inbound pass. It's out of bounds. Still some time left on the clock there as the Bobcats potentially could have a quick shot here. I would think they would put a little bit of time back on as the official blew the whistle and the clock did run off a little bit as the ball was inbounded on the baseline and went out of bounds. And so it went out of bounds first. So it'll come all the way back to the so baseline for inbound. More than point three. Correct. It's got to be a tip. That shot will go in and out, and 35-23 will be our halftime score as the Temple Bulldogs have the lead inside the roundhouse. They're 8-4. and four. The Bobcats 6-9 and nine, looking to stop a four-game losing streak as we head to the halftime break on KFJB-TV. My furnace from 1990 is kind of like my husband. Doesn't perform very well, but I'd rather fix it than replace it. Like you, Honest Heating cooling would rather repair your furnace or ac we take the time to diagnose the issue and do everything possible to restore it before recommending a new one repair restore that's honest serving marshalltown and around honest heating and cooling your amana dealer america's brand for comfort honest heating and cooling picture yourself at marshalltown community college a tiger for life visit ncc.iavalley.edu locations in both marshalltown and grinnell you should never have to wait after ordering new appliances at penn appliance you wouldn't with an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style and let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances often delivering the very next day Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. KFJV TV presents the Bobcat Halftime Report. Halftime is the Bobcats trailing 35 to 23 at the break. Leading score for the Bobcats, Corey Smith and Treshawn Brooks with eight. Five for Kyle Smith. Rasha Pope has 12 for the Atemo Bulldogs. As Parker Derby with uh, just finding space. He has eight and Trey Brown with 10. Your initial reaction to that first half for the Bobcats, like you mentioned a little bit, just slow going, lethargic. I really feel like, you know, really only going five, six guys tonight is, is having a toll. Yeah, it seems the legs are dead, especially Rogelio Saren did not play really in that second quarter as he picked up two fouls. One thing we've seen consistently in the Bobcats four game losing streak is playing against the zone. That 2-3 zone has really slowed down the Bobcats offensively. They have not done an effective job getting it to that short corner or to the free throw line to be able to break down that zone. So it's left with a lot of one pass, two pass, 18 foot jump shots unless Trey can get it to the lane or if Corey's able to knock in something. It's really been a lethargic and really inept offense so far. Up on the Marshalltown High Beast scoreboard, 35-23. Bulldogs on top of the Bobcats at halftime. We'll talk with Brian Murphy, head girls basketball coach, when we come back right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. 
For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level, all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Power Through Partnership, Boy Scouts of America, Adventure On, Edward Jones, Zach Wall, your financial advisor in Marshalltown, Ember's Retirement Community, Independent Living for Active Seniors, Honest Heating and Cooling, let the Honest Team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. And we're back in with the Laurel Diesel Services post-game coaches interview here with Coach Brian Murphy. Bobcats now five and twelve fall to a very good Atoma team who sits at twelve and two. They you lose thirty-three to nineteen. Been a little bit of a, a struggle here on this stretch, and it seems that we've struggled defensively, which is a bit odd tonight. That wasn't the case. Really good defense from the Bobcats. Yeah, the girls were really bought in from the tip. You know, we had a couple of miscommunications early. We let their shooter get open, but for the most part, they were locked in, physical, aggressive. It's what we've been uh, looking for here for a couple of weeks. And when you look at that offensive side, we, we were talking a little bit off air, just not enough shots falling. Atumwa had that zone, and it seemed like sometimes in that zone offense, you think you're having uh, progress, but you're really just passing around the perimeter. What do you need to do to really step up the ability to score in the half court against something like that? I think it's a combination of things. I mean, one, it's, it's amazing how seeing one shot fall yep. sometimes will lead to things. Uh, early in the game, Georgia Jansen, uh, got the swing on a pass and just attacked the rim and caught them off guard because we yep. hadn't been that aggressive. So sometimes you just got to build on those plays. You know, we had a couple bunnies early where, or not early, uh, early in the third, uh, where Frank got it right of the rim, couldn't finish. Amara had a breakaway, couldn't finish. And we just got to string together enough of those plays because, I mean, we cut it to five points uh, yeah. right right out of the gate in the third quarter and then just yeah. couldn't close it and then uh, let them kind of get away with it. Yeah, it was 20-16, to 16 and you guys had it very close there. And it just as you said, comes down to those things. So when you're teaching, when the game isn't doing exactly what you need it to do at the moment, how do you coach up your freshmen and your sophomores as you're coaching them, not for this game, but also for the games to come? Yeah, and really that was a message in the locker room is, I mean, what's really hard is you can simulate these situations in practice, but until you've got the adrenaline and everybody yeah. watching, you've got to you've got to live through the moment a little bit. So, you know, trying to coach them in the moment, using those timeouts in the moment, trying to get them to recognize this is what you're looking for. Um, but, you know, we said post game, we need more games like this yep. where we're in it fight to learn from this. So that way the next time we're in this position, we know what to do. And Friday night, we'll be up in Fort Dodge. Bobcats, really it was about turnovers because they – Matched up well with Fort Dodge. Hopefully we can go up there and shock the Dodgers up there. Thank you very much, Coach, and good luck Friday. That's been the post-game interview brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services, your local qualified diesel mechanics. When we come back, we'll have second-half adjustments. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m. seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. And we're
we're back as the Bobcats continue to warm up. There's 1.45 left to go here at halftime, but real quick, second half adjustments. It's all going to come on the defensive side. Bobcats are going to have to man up and just be able to take their man one-on-one. Did a much better job later, but the real tweak that they can do on the double team, they've been bringing the double from the face of the post, and that's allowed allowed Brown to dump it off for two buckets. They've got a, I would like to see him come from the weak side and bring that second piece. So that's the second half adjustment. So when we come back, we'll be back. See if the Bobcats can claw out of the deficit of a dozen. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB TV. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown Super Tuesday on KJB TV. Lewis Dillon goes alongside me as the Bobcats in Bulldogs getting ready to go for the second half here tonight. Dillon, as you were kind of alluded to there, uh, you know, talking about in this second half. It's going to be a tough task because it seems like when they've been most successful tonight, it's been when Brown's been down in the paint, and there's just nobody out there that's going to match up good enough to be able to shut him down. So even if the Bobcats are able to claw back into this one and get it tight again, they're just, they've are just they got those pieces, it seems like, a tumble that they can get the job done. Although I will say the one commonality is Brown on cue yeah. scores it for two as we open up the second half. They don't go very deep on their bench, just like the Bobcats. No, they don't. No real foul trouble, but there Trey Brown was able to get, get Rowe on his hip and no backside help. Brooks, a leader inside, matches 10 points now for Trey Sean Brooks as the Bobcats still down by a dozen. Potato Olay has come from Taco John's. That's Olay defense from the top of the key. If the Bobcats can get a stop, Brooks has been able to score at the rim at will. Another dish right there to Parker Derby, who has 10, and it's going to be a career night for Parker Derby as he averages six points coming into this one. Well, and it's the same thing we talked about in the adjustment. The, the, the help is coming from the face of the defender, yeah. so all he has to do is drop it off. You have to come weak side help there. Rahelio Saren drove. Now he kicks out. Giannetto drives. He's touched on the hand, and there's a foul. 6.50 in the third quarter. Bob gets down 39-25 as Carter Giannetto will head to the line for two free throws tonight. He is a 70% free throw shooter coming into this one here tonight. As a team, 61% overall. Meanwhile, at Tumwa, they're 72%, much more where you'd like to be as a team at the free throw stripe. But Giannetto knocks down the first one, three points for the senior guard. And that 70-plus percentage at the high school level as a team is really, really good. High school, anything over 65 is pretty, pretty good. I think that's where the Bombcats were a couple years ago. Maybe even last year they might have been up that high. But Corey, nice Corey, job. Yeah, Giannetto misses the free throw. Bobcats, second chance opportunity. Rahelio Sarin picks up his first bucket of the night and makes the Bulldogs pay as they're back within 11. Really nice job by Kyle getting it to the open man, not going up contested layup. Wolfing feeds to Pope. Pope with that left-handed shot. No good. Trishon Brooks climbing the ladder for the rebound. Clear out to Corey Smith. Right wing. And now a pick. Lazy pass. Go the other way. Little Euro step and off the front of the rack. Gets the friendly roll on the road for two. And Pope now 14. Corey has had been bitten by the lazy pass here a couple times tonight. Last night it happened as well. Really have to be crisp with those with those passes. Sarah to hand off to Kyle Smith. Top of the key bounce pass over to the right wing to Treshawn. Lane opens up. Treshawn. Beautiful hesitation move, finishing on the left side for two. And Treshawn Brooks 
with another bucket. He has 12. They're pressuring the perimeter, and Bobcats are playing five out, so just wide open lane to drive. Spin move by Brown to answer. Rahelio Sarin just in the way, tips out the rebound. Bobcats feed it to Treshawn Brooks. 11-point game out of halftime. Bobcats and Atelma just really trading baskets at this point. Kyle Smith in the corner. He loves that spot. Or excuse me, Corey Smith loves that spot but can't hit that one for three. Bobcats are going to have to get something going. You can. It just feels like a couple stops and a three. We're right back in it, but we just can't string them all together at once. Brown hands it off to Pope. He'll reset the offense with under five minutes in the third quarter. Brown, three from straight on, and that is nothing but net. Uh, He's good at basketball. This just in. (laughs) 15 for for the junior that averages 19. (laughs) You've really been on fire lately, I'll tell you that. Last night you were all sorts of wound up. Well, yeah, it was it was hard not to be. I was trying to will my energy, will them to win. Beautiful move by Brooks as he spins at the free throw line. That's the spot. And we were talking about you can't trade baskets. No. You've got to get defensive energy at travel. travel. That's Brown's second travel. Rowe yeah. was able to body up, not not secede any ground and was able to stand his ground. I don't know if you remember the name Kajoa Heligba. I do not. No. He was a guard, point guard for the UNI Panthers. Okay. Back uh, when the UNI Panthers went to the uh, NCAA tournament, knocked out Kansas. Okay, yeah. Lost in the Sweet 16 in Michigan State. But Kajoa Heligba was like a, uh, a spinning image play-wise. But Trayshawn Brooks drives to the free throw line. He's cut off. And a foul's going to come in on it. Anyway, long story short, you and I, Panther guard, he loved that spot. And yeah. Gary Rima, one of my more favorite play-by-play guys, he called it a jumper. So I've been oh, trying to good. think of of that spot at the free throw line that, uh, we, that we could call it a. Hmm. I, I I don't know. Here's a replay. Here's a replay of the drive of the foul. Boy, that's a tough foul right there. He almost picked up the first down. He got a good four yards. (laughs) He dove. (laughs) Dove for the sticks. Thompson picks up that foul. Kyle Smith off the inbound. Three is no good. Rally Osiris, no good. The door work, rebound over to Corey Smith, and they say a foul. And it looked like Corey Smith maybe caught an elbow on the nose. Rahelio Sarin, I, you know, you sometimes if you're just looking at stat sheets, Rowe doesn't always do a whole lot. But when you look at somebody who gives a crap, if you just go by straight give a crap factor, <laughs> Rowe has made a lot of good plays even over this losing streak. Jumper, Corey Smith gives a little grin to the student section for two. And you can say that since we're technically not we're on the. We're just on YouTube, We're just baby. on YouTube tonight, folks. Thank the Lord. I didn't want to have to yeah. deal with the FCC. That's right. And and our national sponsors. Uh, all of a sudden, this has turned into a bar stool <laughs> broadcast tonight. It's got to be midnight somewhere. <laughs> Back cut again. Wow, what a good play. Brown with the fine, Pope with the shot. And this happens in the scramble that the defensive, our eyes get off the their man, and there he goes on the back cut. Just lose your man. And it's happened over and over. Bob gets down a dozen as Michael Apple takes a timeout. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live, make friends, and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. What's up, Bobcat Nation? This is Ryan Schmidt, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFA TV. 46-34, three minutes to go in the third quarter. I imagine he's drawing up a play, not playing hangman or no. a game like that. No. Uh, yeah, you don't see back there Ryan Schmidt, who you saw in that intro, saying, I'll have an H. <laughs> Favorite car game to play? Oh, man. 
Was it Hangman? Was it so uh, we, I Spy? What's uh, play, top ten? We will play a game. Basically, it's the alphabet game. You say movies, and okay. somebody says an A. Okay. Starts with an A, then a B, then a C, and it's a pretty fun game. It's gotten us through some trips from Washington to Iowa. We so. found a podcast. Uh, we, we like a road trip trivia prod podcast. Okay. It's pretty good, you know. I know you're big into the podcast game, so I'm surprised you didn't know about that. I'm big into the trivia game, too. Oh, yeah. Treshawn Brooks with a nice cut out of the timeout. Draws back within 10. They have not been able to keep Trey in front of them. Not a lot of teams can. It's just, can we do enough to stop them on the defensive end? Elio Serra with a good play defensively. He hates the call, and so do we. I will say that is a it's bad a call right there. It's a garbage call. Brown bumped him just as much as he bumped Brown. What can Brown do for you? Get a foul on you, I guess. That's just a bad call. And, it's just, uh, and, and he's now getting warned, and it's, yeah. it's the ref show here, and they're just two teams playing, playing secondary characters. It's it's a it's ridiculous, and I will say, we well I I won't speak for you because you always complain about the officials, but uh, I, not, I just I, I'll complain about calls. I don't complain about officials, but this has been well. There's people behind those calls, Dylan. Ah, uh, they're robots to me. <laughs> Nameless faces. That's what I always. Say. Trisha, I forgot what I was even going to say. <laughs> Two minutes to go in the third quarter. Ten-point game. Trayshawn Brooks looking to cut. Bobcats can't break that ten-point deficit. Corey Smith will try the three. Skims off the iron. Brown with the rebound, and he'll bring it up into the front court himself. And you can just see the student section standing on their feet the whole game. They want – there needs to they be a win. three. They need – it just seems we get that chance to make that big three – and nothing falls. Great job by Corey. Wow. Pope with a hesitation move and just got past Corey Smith. You're right, though. Corey with great defense right there. And Pope with just an excellent play. He has 18. Brown and Pope, they are the difference yeah. makers. This is why, I mean, 6-16 six and 16 last year, but they are carrying this team this year. So is Trishon Brooks as he matches with a two-point bucket. But Brown and Pope, definitely two fun players to watch here in the Iowa Lions. Yeah, and really the difference in this game, he just won. Walked and oh my gosh, just walked. But the difference has been Derby. It's been that third score able to get things off of, off the bounce or off the pass. That is the difference. Pope the senior. Giannetto was guarding drives <sighs> and I saw. Thought I saw a little bit of an arm bar in there, but Giannetto is going to pick up his second foul of the night. As you look right here on the replay, as you got, it was definitely a walk. As you see it, as you, you could see right out there, right in front, and the ref shook his head no. Mm -hmm. The other thing that shook were both feet of the ball handler. So Dylan is all shook up. <laughs> nice two-man game. Oh, my gosh. Shot just won't go for the Cats over the last couple of weeks. Right? And, and they're wide open. Yeah. That's the whole thing. They're wide open. Not taking bad shots by any means. It was just a beautiful two man game on the side. Got a great wide open look and nothing. Pope stands on the Bobcat logo at midcourt. Shot clock is off. And a timeout by Neil Hartz, head coach for the Atemo Bulldogs. We'll take it with them. Cats down by 10. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that has passed down from every previous generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family for generations. We want to be there for your first car. We want to be there for your family SUV. And we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. This is Jacob Thiessen. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Bobcat did a hole. They've been like that all night as they have not been able to really overcome a hot start by Atumbo here tonight. Every time he gets to that 10-point mark, Atumbo has really found an answer tonight, Dylan. 
Yeah, it's found the answer, or you could say the Bobcats just haven't found the bucket. They've had chances to get it underneath 10, but the the key three-point opportunities have not fallen all night long. Atelmo plays for the final shot. Five seconds to go. Pope to the left wing. Kicks over to the right wing. A step in, long shot. Just inside the three-point arc, it is no good as Matt Mitchell went for the uh, nearly three-point shot as we head to the fourth quarter. It's a 10-point game, eight minutes left inside the roundhouse on Super Tuesday. At Honest Heating and Cooling, they take comfort seriously. Their latest offering? Smart Integrity Monitoring. Combined with an honest maintenance plan, it takes all the gas out of home comfort. The technicians take accurate measurements of all the necessary parameters and deliver you the truth about where your home's comfort stands. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. That's honest. Get a smart integrity monitoring plan and let the honest team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Honest Heating and Cooling. This is a ring. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 48-38 up on the high beast scoreboard as the Bobcats trailing to the Bulldogs. Time for a scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. Dylan, your mic is on. My mic is on, and the scores are few. We're still at Council Bluffs, Jefferson, and Lincoln at 36-25. Either they haven't updated the score, or that's quite the scoring drought. It is a drought. I, it looks like um, I think Varsity Bound has also crashed here tonight, yes, which, is, which is a daily occurrence. Varsity Bound. Good in uh, theory. Good <laughs> execution, a little rough. Nearly a zero. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. Bobcats have really don't ask in. for much, Dylan. We no. really don't. Skims off the iron, but Rahelio still doing the dirty work for the Bobcats. Gets the rebound back out to Treshawn Brooks. In the paint, just inside the free throw line. That's the spot. And he knocks it down, and the Cats are back with an A. 20 for Treshawn. He had 10 in that third quarter. Continues to start the fourth quarter with that same pizzazz. You might just have to go Trey offensively. Get stops and let Trey create. Now Treshawn Brooks guarding on Brown. He can't stop that with those lanky arms. Brown with his first bucket in the fourth quarter. He has 17. Yeah, and that's with Rowe takes a three. Why? Why not? Kyle Smith went for the rebound. Couldn't bring it in. Now up the near side, Wolfing. Wolfing cross-court pass to Derby. He was a man who took that shot right before we headed to the fourth quarter, but he wasn't able to knock it down. It looked like a bobcat had got a piece of that shot. Pope now back to the near side corner, sets a screen for Wolfing, dribbles out. Treshawn Brooks almost picks his pocket. A little push off right there by Wolfing. Wolfing barking out the signals. Eight seconds on the shot clock. He backs it out. Treshawn Brooks guards up on him. Wolfing feeds Brown. Brown left wing, left high post, pulls up. Shot pops in and out. Boy, that's a good shot by Brown who forced that thing at the last second as the shot clock was going off. Yeah, he's a thick dude, powerful dude, but he's not just a post player. Was able to rise up, get a good look. Kyle Smith, baseline, now cross-court pass. Now Giannetto drives left block. It's off the glass and the rack. No good by Giannetto. And here come the Atomo Bulldogs with under six. Yeah, it was a good cross-court pass breaking down the defense. Carter just couldn't finish it with the left. Still a 10-point game. Bobcats trailing inside the roundhouse. Tumwa just really draining the clock and getting buckets late. Brown posts up. Rahelio Sarin with a nice block, and it's going to be off of Brown last. Bobcat basketball. Rowe has done so many positive things here in the second half. Not really on. He's got one bucket, but he's got three offensive rebounds. Walled up, was able to get the block. Bobcats have a chance to continue to tip in. Here we see that quick, that block by Rowe right there. Almost a miss two offensively. Giannetto three. That one is the back of the net. Knocked down by Giannetto. His first three of the night. And a big one right there. Gets the Bobcats back within seven. You got to shoot it with confidence. You're wide open in the corner. He put it in the corner pocket and it's good. Bobcats only down seven. Trying to hang around in this one. Straight up was Corey Smith. But they say two shots is leaning into him. Was Chase Thompson. And that will send Thompson to the line. 
for two free throws as Thompson is 73% free throw shooter on the season. You want to look at that just to see. I thought he jumped in to Smith's body. I thought he did too. And I thought Corey Smith was pretty straight up. That'll be yep. his first of the night. First team foul here in the fourth quarter. And the first free throw is up and out. Thompson no good. Thompson with his second trip to the free throw line tonight. He is two of three at the stripe with the second one here, fourth one of the night to come. Bobcats only down seven, still over five minutes left to go in this one. And that free throw is good, extending it to an eight-point lead. Thompson with three. Treshawn Brooks into the front court, leading the Bobcats in scoring here tonight. Still in that zone, help defense still in. Yeah, we're still in that zone. Bobcats doing a little bit better job of breaking it down by the cross-court pass, getting everybody flowing, and then being able to drive against it. Good cut. Kyle Smith cuts into the free throw line and knocks down a jumper for two. And that's immediately, if you're able to get that pass cross-court and you have to flow that zone everywhere, it breaks down, able to dribble drive, and then Kyle coming from that backside wide open in the lane for two. Brooks got in the way and swiped at it, missed, but Wolfing misses the shot. Clear out to Treshawn. Up the court quickly. Good defense right there as the Bobcats down by six. And here's where, oh, my goodness, almost throwing it away, but wide open three. Fuck it. Huge shot right there. I got excited. I thought it was last night, and you were already on paternity. <laughs> I got real stoked. Timeout on the floor. Bobcats back within three. Concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. What up, Bobcat Nation? This is Jose Vargas, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. On a Super Tuesday, Cats making it interesting late, hanging around, and I think that's the biggest thing is that Tumwa hasn't been able to pull away, and finally the Bobcats hitting some late shots here to get themselves back into this one. Well, they finally got, there's some different ways you can beat a zone. One, get it to the short corner, get it into the lane, it'll kind of collapse on itself, or you can get cross-court passes, you can swing it to the opposite side, forcing that zone to flow the other way. Bobcats have been able to effectively do all three of those, and in the end, what it makes for wide-open opportunities, if it be from the two corner threes or in the middle of the lane. Corey Smith doing a little bit of everything right now, but it's all really flowed out of number three, Trey Brooks. Well, we saw Brent, your Brent, assistant coach, really coaching those guys hard during that break. We'll see if it pays off in a travel by Brown. Bobcats can tie it up. On this possession with 4.03 to go in the basketball game. And that makes for Trey's trifecta of travels. That's his third. Trey all day. Isn't that what you say oh, usually? I think so. Well, okay. I said who's going to be the best Trey tonight, and they've both true. been very they good. They have been very good. Both Brown and Brooks have delivered. A lean, no foul, cutting around the big man down low is Coulter. Bobcats get it back, late feed, Corey Smith for two. Bobcats back within one. The eyes on number one, Carter Gianetto got the bounce and saw Corey out of his left eye and was able to fire a pass in perfect scoring position. Brooks going to be sore after this one tonight, Dylan. Yeah, he's been beat, bruised, but he has been all for it. Brown, turnaround. And gets it off the glass. Turn around, stick it out. Like he was in there for the bucket. That was big. Three minutes to go inside the roundhouse. Oh, gosh darn it. Careless turnovers. Back to the Bulldogs with under three minutes to go. 
Bobcats, after giving up 33 points in that first half, have played much better defensively late. Pope drops it into Brown. Outside the left block, drives in front of the hoop, puts it up, and Rahelio Sarin, good defense, gets the rebound, clear out to Trayshawn Brooks. Three-point game and a timeout on the floor. Two and a half minutes to go inside the roundhouse. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Hi, this is Lamar, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Well, we are two and a half, uh, two thirty-three left to go in this one. Dylan, how many seconds do we have left in this game? We have 153, baby. Good job. Every second matters. I'm going to start just giving seconds in the first quarter, <laughs> just for my own <laughs> giggles. No, folks, he does not have a calculator out. No, it's it's all it's simple math, right? It's always that's got to keep the brain sharp at my age. Bobcats with the basketball out of the timeout taken by head coach Mike Apple. Giannetto open for the three. Oh, that was a game tire that rolls out. It was everywhere but in. My goodness, that would have been huge. Bulldogs go to work in their great tops and bottoms on the road here in the roundhouse. Bulldogs are 8-4. and four. Bobcats are 6-9. and nine. Looking to stop a four-game losing streak. Pope guarded by Giannetto. Five seconds on the shot clock. Rahelio picks him up and a drive by Pope. Extends the lead to five. Pope was able to get around him and Rowe did not hedge enough out there and take away that right arm. Or left hand, actually. Approaching 90 seconds to go on this one inside the roundhouse as Treshawn Brooks drives to the free throw line, picks up the dribble, back out to Kyle Smith, three, gets him back within two. Huge three on the right wing by Kyle Smith as he hits his second one of the night. And Atumwa has taken every second off the shot clock. Bobcats need to continue their really strong defensive play here in the fourth. They're almost in their prevent defense right now on offense, right? Yeah, it's basically we're going to just allow that clock to tick down and then go either to Brown or Pope, and that's a timeout by Atumwa. Timeout by head coach Neil Hartz for the Atumwa Bulldogs. This is Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. Dylan, 61 seconds now remaining in this one. 61 seconds, 11 seconds left on the shot clock for a Tumwa here. Bobcats have played really, really well, thinking this is going to be a two-man game with Pope and Brown. Pope drives, Pope kicks, three on the way, no good. Corey Smith with the rebound. That makes zero sense as a shot. Wolfing has zero points tonight, and you come out of a timeout, and that's your shot. Well, zero points, zero cents. I get it. That's right. At least there's synergy. 
Giannetto drives in off the glass, hangs on, drops in. We're tied at 55. Giannetto, it hasn't fallen all night, but five points in the fourth quarter. He's got the Cats and the Dogs all tied up. And keeping in front of him, you might see a foul here. Bobcats only have one foul. Now a foul going to be out on high. Giannetto will pick up the foul. That's only the second. And so whistles have gone quiet here for the most part in the fourth. That's number three on Giannetto. And I anticipate the Bobcats, if they're going to have it out on top, they may foul again. As you said, only two team fouls. Ten seconds to go inside the roundhouse. Atella will call another timeout. Hopefully they get as good a shot as they did out of their last timeout. Which resulted in zero points. That's right. 55-55, our score inside the roundhouse. 9.4 seconds. Neil Hart's calling that timeout. What are you thinking right now? I'm going to the top side pick and roll where they have round, usually in that pick and roll around the three-point line, high post, and get it in Pope's hands, and then you have the two-man game. Last time they tried it, Pope was able to get all the way to the rim for an easy layup. This way, you force the Bobcats to decide what you're going to do. If I'm in the Bobcats huddle, immediately what I'm talking about from the defensive side do we immediately switch do we try to fight you have to be very clear what you're going to do in this situation because if there's any hesitation Bobcats lose five in a row boy I tell you what though the efforts you know maybe the shots haven't been going down maybe execution isn't always the best but boy the the effort throughout this one maybe started a little bit slow I know we yep. talked about that but the, the effort these guys are given uh, night in and night out, uh, really not questioned a whole lot. Yeah, and this is the difference between tonight and last night a little bit late are the shots fell. It's yeah. because it's similar getting down big early. Now, last night, the third quarter was much worse than it, it was here tonight. But the Bobcats have continued to fight. Pope inbounds to Brown. Back to Pope. Five seconds to go. Pope crossover, and they're going to say he's held up high. Are we playing for overtime here? I think the Bobcats are trying to extend this thing because they still have one more foul, foul to, to give. give. That's, but if you're playing for three. overtime, you're not wanting Trey or Carter to pick up that because that would both be their that fourth foul. So right now you're going to have Corey and Kyle with one foul apiece. Everybody else out there, Roe, Carter, and Trey all have three fouls. But this, back to we talked about how that five fouls per quarter – it's going to be a big rule change, and it, yep. it definitely is shown 100%. here tonight is that the Bobcats have been able, because it reset, have been able to have fouls to give late in the game and extending this, and because the Tum was hanging out 28, 30 feet outside, they're not going to go for shots. They're not going to be given, oh, we're trying to launch a 30-footer. Now, maybe if they were a little bit more aggressive than that and you put it on the heels, Bobcats can't just – reach in and foul because you could go up for a shot and then they'd be on the line. Look at this, Coach Brynjersen is all the way out at midcourt. He's parking something out late. I think he wants Corey Smith to take the foul here because he I think he only has one. Yeah, we were talking both Smith brothers have one apiece. Oh, oh Raheli, a great play right there. He knocks away the inbound pass, which was going to Brown. That would have been a huge steal. Yeah, part of me gets a little nervous because if Roe didn't tip that there is That's an easy no two-point bucket. One. Brown gets the inbound. Two seconds. Pull up. Shots missed. We're going to overtime. 55-55. Oh, my goodness, Bobcat wow. fans. And everybody's going crazy. Getting a little bit of extra basketball here tonight. Just what we were hoping for, Dylan. <laughs> you got anywhere to be? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. As of right, well, yeah, there is. Uh, anyway, 55-55 is our score as of right now. Boy, we've had uh, about uh, – Have you? has your phone been going crazy? Yeah. There Last was time that, we played of, a tumble, we had Amber Alerts, and then later there was gunshots. Oh, good. And I've had no, Amber Alerts. No, it wasn't an Amber Alert. It was because there was the murder on the loose. So it was just a – they don't call those Amber Alerts. It was, it was just a warning. <laughs> it was a public health warning. Yeah, this is uh, out of Greene County. It was going yeah. off when I was in Newton. Your wife was there here yeah. this afternoon. Down She's traveling seventh, the countryside. <laughs> that's right. Seventh grade basketball games. Watching Bobcats at all levels here today. And uh, I think Bobcats swept 
Newton down there at all levels. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Great news right there. All right, so we are headed to overtime, 55-55, as the Bobcats and Bulldogs battling it out here earlier tonight. It was the girls' game, and the Bobcats lost that one 33-19. Defense was there tonight. The tumble goes to 12-2. and Talked with Coach about it. It's that offensively weren't able to see shots go in, but the defensive intensity was there again, which had been lacking the last couple games. Yeah. I, I don't I, – I'm – I'm sure Ryan is Greg. He's from Newton. Well, down in that area. Yeah, that okay. general vicinity. Yeah, I, I think his allegiance, though, is uh, still Hopefully with, with the Bobcats. It is, because I just got to go yeah. Bobcats. So I, oh, I think good, he's, good, he's good. just happy about, you know, all levels winning here tonight. Yeah, my wife and I, as we're driving down there, I was like, this is, well, we say it every time we go down, it's the longest 30-minute drive <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Day you end 80s? up in a cul-de-sac. You're not really <laughs> sure what's going on. In so Newton. you just honk. That is for sure. Although Otumwa has, with all the hills and yep. the diagonal roadways. Yeah. It's not built on a grid. <laughs> it's not. Pope with a drive and a travel is going to be called in a turnover. Bobcat basketball. As we are just into overtime here tonight. Carter. Great well, defense. Carter has five points in the fourth quarter, but his defense on Pope, yes, Pope has scored quite a bit, but Carter has been inside his jersey all night long. We are in overtime. Bobcats looking to stop a four-game losing streak here tonight. The energy's there. The execution has been there late. And that is a pure bucket right there. Treshawn for two, and the Cats have the lead. I believe this is their first lead of the night, Dylan. It is. Uh, I, yes, it is. Uh, no, they have the two, two nothing. Bruce had had two yeah, to nothing, yeah. and Took it gives lead. us another lead. And now a turnover on a Tumwa. Back to the Bobcats. We've got junior hires, elementary kids jumping around we've got high school students in the student sections jumping around we've got people that have been retired for a decade hooting and hollering bobcat faithful are excited about this wait who's been retired i think there's uh, some hairlines on the other side of the court that <laughs> would show if they're retired and no i'm not talking about brandon lewis sarah <laughs> thank you treshawn brooks tap of the key hesitates drives up Against Brown, cat the bucket, free throw to come. Trey Brooks, who's going to be the best Trey? It's going to come down to that. Make me look like a prophet because number three has gone off with a career high 24. First free throw of the night for Trey Sean Brooks. And it's off the front of the iron, but Rahelio Sarin with a rebound, and I think a lane violation on Chase Thompson for the Atemo Bulldogs. Okay. So that will bail out the Bobcats. Trey thought it was on him, and he was he was perplexed. But Rowe would have had that offensive rebound anyways. Here we see it. Yeah, 10 was in there just a hair early. As that's Chase Thompson. Good guys get another shot at it. And he makes him pay. Three-point play the old-fashioned way for Treshawn Brooks. And it's a five-point lead with two and a half minutes to go in overtime. That intensity has to stay top of the line. Brown puts his head down, leans in, misses the shot. Rebound, Bulldogs. Pope, right wing three. That was actually not Pope. I thought that was Pope. It was Wolfing, and that's his first bucket of the night. Involved in OT. After I... Uh, after I said it was a terrible draw for a play when he missed the three in regulation, he proves me wrong here with a big three. Saren will help the Bobcats move it around the perimeter now. Treshawn Brooks off of his screen. Over to Kyle Smith, wide open. Get in there. No, off the left side of the iron. Three was no good, and rebound brought in by Chase Thompson. I'm perplexed why wow. Otomo would try to run underneath that screen. They got away with one because Kyle was wide open. Pope over to the right wing. Thompson 
Feeds to Brown. Rahelio Sarin guarding on him. Doesn't use his screen. Rolls in. Rahelio hits the deck. Bobcats get the rebound. Under 90 to go in overtime. Oh, got away with one. He he does that every once in a while where he'll try to flop to get the call. Bobcats were lucky that they were able to get the rebound. Three, no good. Offensive rebound and a foul is going to be called. That's going to be number four on the Bobcats, Rahelio Sarin. Fourth team foul. They did not reset that, though, in overtime. I don't know. if nope. Does that carry over into, from the fourth quarter? I believe it carries over. Okay. That's much like I believe it all carries over. Okay. Two-point game. Bobcats with the lead. 60-58. to 58. One minute to go inside the roundhouse. A true conference of champions matchup here tonight. Delivering as the Bobcats... Trying to be the Cardiac Cats and get a win. Brown, leaner, and it goes. We're tied at 60. Trayshawn Brooks looked a little deflated after that shot. What can we do to get a stop on these guys? Eight-second shot clock differential. And the timeout is taken on the floor. We'll take it with them. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB-TV. He's drops back, looks to pass. He's got him oh. in the flat. That's Tate Ring makes the catch. He's up to midfield. He breaks away at the 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown. Tate Ring, his second one of the night. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. We're locked in a good one here in the roundhouse. 36 seconds to go inside the roundhouse on a super Tuesday. He's Dylan Doze. I'm Brandon Lewis. Jesse DeMeyer, Keith Stewart, Zach Tomish, our KFJB crew here tonight. Giannetta will inbound to Treshawn Brooks. What were you guarding uh, or drawing up in that uh, that huddle in that timeout right there, Dylan? It really comes with Trey at the top of the key. They've done a nice job with their pin down action of getting open shots in the corner for either Kyle or Corey Smith. Here you get Trey, top of the key. Pocket oh. picked. And all the way is Pope for the layup for two. And Atemwa takes their first lead in overtime, 62-60. Treshawn Brooks back into the front court. Guarded by Pope. Rahelio Sarin with a screen. Brooks, a hesitation into the rack. Count! Oh! oh! Off the front end of the iron as that one looked to be going down but rolls off the front. And two free throws with 5.6 seconds left in this one. Treshawn Brooks will have to knock both of them down to tie the game up. Wow. I thought that was going to be an and yeah. one. No good. And this is the question, do you miss or make? Do you miss on purpose and try to get the put back, or do you try to make it and just extend the game? Well, we mentioned Bobcats 61% at the line, 72 for Atumwa. Second free throw is good for Brooks. And we have a timeout on the floor with 5.6 seconds to go in the basketball game. And this is where we're lucky. You know, this got caught the other night against Waterloo West where they didn't have enough team fouls to extend the game. They had two late and couldn't foul enough to extend the game. Bobcats sit at four team fouls. So the first foul on yep. the inbounds, it's going to be free throws. So, Which means you're still going to have about five seconds yeah. left after that uh, you know, early foul, right? Yeah, and I would I would look on Atumwa because anticipate Bobcat press, um, see Atumwa maybe almost run a fly pattern, right? Super Bowl's coming up. It's just to take someone deep and see if you can get a pass down to the other end. Load up like your boy Brock Purdy, right? Yes, my boy. <laughs> my boy, Brock. We were, we were I know just... you're a big Brock Purdy fan. 
I'm not mad at him. Uh, last time I saw him in an Iowa State uniform, he got pulled in the fourth quarter because he kept throwing picks against the Hawks, so I'm not oh. mad at him. Wow. But I'm not mad at the Niners either. That's a really good football team, and they got George Kittle. Bulldogs with a one-point lead and the basketball on the baseline as Pope will inbound. They were looking for that deep pass initially, and a bump in Rahelio Saren's night's going to be over as he commits the foul. It's not who you really wanted to pick up the foul, but you really don't have a uh, choice in that case right there as Chase Thompson was a man fouled. He hasn't done a whole lot offensively tonight, but he is three of four at the free throw stripe. First and foremost, if there's a miss, you got to get the rebound. Secondly, I believe the Bobcats have one time. They have no timeouts left, so you can't call a timeout. Yep. So they know the play they're going to do. If I'm a Tumwa, if the bo if they miss one, I'm fouling right away. You have two team fouls, so you're going to be able to extend the game. Chase Thompson again for two free throws. And it's just .7 seconds came off that clock. Neil Hart's head coach for Tumble check it out. The that looked pure. Students and younger levels cheering on the teammates as Thompson knocks down the free throw. Good as well, and here in the second half, three of four at the free throw line. Five of six overall on the night for Chase Thompson at the free throw line. Extends it to three, so you need a three. Obviously, the best three-point shooter on the basketball team for the Bobcats is Kyle Smith. How do you drop the play to get the ball in his hands? They've been able... They've been able to get the down pick and him running along the baseline, and it's been open. Now, again, we talked about Otomo has two timeouts or two uh, two fouls, so they can they can foul, and that's what I would do to not allow it to get to that. But if you're the Bobcats, if whatever, if they're doubling Smith, all five can shoot it. You know, it's of course Kyle's the best shooter, but all five are comfortable taking that three point shot. So if you've got an open look, I say you take it. To tie the game with a three-point made shot. And, you know, there is that strategy, too, where maybe you try to drive to the hoop and get a bucket and then foul again. But, obviously, under under five seconds, not really usually. Usually, you know, ten seconds or more time you could do that. But too, uh, too little left on the clock for a, a full-court drive yeah. right here. Unless you're Tyus Edney. Inbound to Brooks. Brooks drives up. Three from the right wing, buries that one. Why did a tum one not? That is an absolute terrible job by a Tumwa. Why in the world would you not foul? You have two team fouls. They could have stopped him at any point. Brooks that, is too quick. That comes down to a coaching mistake, in my opinion. It may be philosophical, but you just allowed the fastest guy to go up the side of the court, and now they're saying it's a two-point shot. I don't think we have a camera angle. Officials say three-point bucket it accounts. Tumwa was not liking it. We've but, got a uh, twin of timeouts here, Brandon. <laughs> Let's go five more. Two OT tonight, double OT, and Brooks was on the line. Atemwa, Atemwa has a case to be made. All right, so, well... <laughs> Uh, burn, more, the one, one, burn, burn, burn the tapes! Burn the tapes! Ooh, he ah, knows, you know, we don't that, actually do we have the, the alter. Do we have the alternate uh, angle on that one? Was uh, was that was close? Was was school staff on the other side recording on their iPhone? Can we <laughs> can we somehow stitch those video angles together? You know, I'm trying to. I've got a wife who uh, wants to uh, deliver a baby, and uh, oh, he was. That was a three. You're right. That was. He was that clean. That was a three. And uh, you know, 
Uh, the Bobcats have other ideas here tonight. I want to just tell you, look at this. Great job by our very own. Oh, he's, he's behind Stewart. it by three or four He's He's Stewart, baby, coming in in the clutch, getting that shot. Great job, Keith. We have two cameras, and we were able to get two incredible Big. angles. Shout out to Jesse and Keith there. Big game, Trey. 29 tonight. Trey yes. Brown has 21. <laughs> Pope has 22. What my Trey can do. <laughs> Anything your Trey can do, mine can do better. Correct. Thank you. No Rogelio Saren. As he fouled out. Atelma likes to, to work that clock, don't they? It feels like they've gotten very tight in the last quarter and a half. Pope with three. Smith knocks it away. And the Bobcats have the basketball. Up to Trayshawn Brooks. This is reminiscent to it. Atoma looks a lot like how the Bobcats have looked in their losing streak. Good in the first three quarters and then really tighten up in the fourth and don't execute at the same level. Left high post jumpers no good by Treshawn Brooks. Rebounded. Brought in by Parker Derby. And now quickly up court, Brooks is going to pick up a foul as Chase Thompson will draw that one. And Thompson has been pretty good at the free throw line here tonight, as we alluded to. Four of uh, five of six at the free throw stripe tonight. That's Trey's fourth foul. That's a tough one. Yep. He went out not with good balance. And so when he when Thompson just ran into him, he was he was not set. And that one off the front of the iron, no good by Thompson. Just his second missed free throw of the night. I'd take a third one, just if we're asking what we would prefer. And Thompson is 6 of 8 at the free throw stripe. And it's a one-point game. Thompson was not taking requests there. Gianetto saves the ball from going out of bounds right there. Dribbles out to the right wing. Spin move. Hesitates. Gets locked up. Out to Kyle Smith. Almost a turnover. That's a and that's going to be a foul. Pope on the floor. That'll be Pope's second foul of the night. Rayshon Brooks gets the inbound pass, controls the basketball, flips it under hand to Giannetto. Now backdoor play, down to Brooks, and the Bobcats have the lead back by two. Corey Smith, great eyes. He's such a good passer. He's got a great basketball IQ, and he thread the needle. Bobcats up one, two to go. I would already thought in my mind that Thompson missed that second free throw, so it's only a one-point lead, Dylan. Brown, spin move, lean. And he beats Jacob Hayes for the bucket. That is just tough to stop. I don't care who you are. Yeah, that, that has to be, hey, Jacob's just walling up, doing the best he can, physical. It's going to have to come with that help. Down low to Corey Smith. Pops it back out to Giannetto. Bob Castle reset with 15 on the shot clock. Treshawn, a couple of crossovers. Lane opens up, and he puts it off the glass, and it goes in. For two, and Treshawn with 33 on the night. 90 seconds to go. Brandon, I hate to say it, he has filled up my third quarter and fourth quarter slots for buckets. <laughs> Somebody find Dylan some more paper. Good deny there by Hayes in the post. One minute to go inside the roundhouse. Ten seconds now on the shot clock. Pope, top of the key. Brown sets a screen, doesn't use it, blows by Hayes, up high, misses it, Gene had a rebound, Bobcats with a one-point lead. When, Hand off to Treshawn Brooks. When you get the shot clock under 10 every single time, you really minimize your options, what you're able to do with the basketball, yeah. really feel like they've kind of packed it in a little bit from a tumble, almost overthinking the situation, and it feels like they got too tight, the Bobcats have been able to 
get the lead. My goodness, man. Yeah. We were down 10 going into this quarter. It did not look good. Bobcats were not making big buckets. And then all of a sudden, Giannetto hits a three. Kyle Smith hits a three. Trey hits the game tire at the end of the first overtime for a three. Man alive, has this been fun in the roundhouse. Super Tuesday living up to it here tonight in the Conference of Champions Iowa Alliance matchup. I just came up with it. We could only play two quarters down in a tumble early this year. We're playing six quarters here. You average that <laughs> thing out. We got four quarters in both games. Minus the shotgun. Or the uh, well, that's bo- I think that's a bonus. Oh, <laughs> that's I, like, no. yeah, not a good bonus. <laughs> not a, not good, a good, bonus. good bonus. Well, we the Bobcats get. out of the timeout, taken right there, leading 68-67 with a with the basketball. And Tumble will have just under 20 seconds if the Bobcats use all the time here. Trey Sean Brooks almost trapped out high, gets it to Giannetto. Giannetto now looking for a cutter. Kyle Smith went down to the left block. Nothing was really there. Treshawn, high, high post. Can't hit it off the front of the iron. And Atumwa, Brown quickly up court. Loses the basketball and a timeout. Luckily to save Atumwa in their possession. 21 seconds left in the basketball game right there. Almost a turnover by Brown, but he was able to gather it in as Neil Hartz calls the timeout. Corey was tracking his steps and about he was able to get Loosen the grip a little bit, not able to fully knock it over. Brown able to corral it, but Atumwa Bench smartly calls a timeout. All right, so 21 seconds left in it. I, I think last time they were in this situation, you mentioned going to Brown. Yeah. They did. Yeah, it's going to be that high pick and roll. It's the one that makes the most sense. It's not rocket science. It's who executes better. It's, it's as really as simple as that. Is, and that's where it comes down to you're going to go your best play and defensively you have to give your best effort and really comes down to are they going to when are they going to try to go into their set are they going to hold the ball till you get to 10 maybe 6 and give yourself one opportunity or are you going to go at 12 to 15 seconds since you're down one if i was tied i'd wait till 6 seconds down one, I'm going at 11. I'm going at 11 or 12. Allow yourself that opportunity to foul if you need to or to get that second chance opportunity if you're able to corral the offensive rebound. Chase Thompson will inbound. Pope with the basketball. And like Dylan said, here it goes at 11 seconds. Pope into Brown. Brown, double team. And a foul on the floor. I believe it's going to be the call. Brown, they're going to get a hold on the Bobcats, and the foul's going to come in on Corey Smith. Brown did a good job splitting the double team there. Student section making all the noise in Brown. A junior, cool, calm, collected. 24 on the night. Yeah, he's been he's been good. To take the lead. Yep. And they will. Brown makes both. And it's Bobcat basketball on a foul. It's going to be called on the Tumble Bulldogs. That's their fourth foul. So one more, and it would be free throw. That's a smart play. You dwindle down the time, and it's now 5.7. If they would have been, if they would have done that 10 Earlier, minutes probably, ago, they probably would, wouldn't be in double overtime. They, they would be high fiving in the locker room. Inbound to Brooks. Nailed the shot to get to this corner. He has it poked away, and that will do it. Tremendous effort tonight, but the Bobcats come up short, 69-68 in the Bulldogs party. It looked like Brooks might try to be, he was looking, Hayes was open in that short corner, and I'm wondering if he slowed down to look at the pass there. Yeah, I think he was looking to pass. It kind of looked like he, and then he just lost that basketball. Man, Tremendous effort, good. 33. That's the best performance I've seen out of Treshawn Brooks. He played poor last night. You mentioned it. 
but he responds in a huge way for his team tonight. He really did, 33 points, but we asked. It's hard to argue against Trey Brown knocking down both free throws when it mattered. He had 25, a Tumwa huge win. Bobcats, big loss. Bobcats drop to 6-10. and 10. Bulldogs improve with a win to 9-4. and four. Dylan, thanks for taking the locker room report. I got to get going. Hey, I am happy this was our l- I wish we would have won, but you've got more important things to do <laughs> and more important things to worry about. Good luck All to right. everything for you and yours. Appreciate it. And we'll wrap this thing up. All right. Zach and I got this. Locker room report is next. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KJB TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, lennoxecu.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends Prime Rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's Steakhouse. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. And we're back in on the Locker Room Report. My goodness, a gut punch here tonight in double overtime. Bobcats lose 69-68. It was all about the junior Trey Brown for a ton when knocking down two free throws with 6.8 seconds left to go to go for his Atumwa high 25 points. Your Bobcats were paced by the senior point guard, Trey Brooks. Trey Brooks had a career-high 33 tonight, uh, was able to turn the ball over just at the end of the game, got it poked away. Bobcats fall to 69-68. Let's dig into the stats a little bit here. We'll start with the Ottumwa Bulldogs going to 9-4. Rasha Pope, their point guard, Senior point guard, only senior on the starting lineup, had a really good game, especially early. He had 22 points. Chase Thompson hit some big free throws for him. Number 10 had six. Nehemiah Wolfing hit a three late in the fourth quarter. That was a big one. Matt Mitchell had a three-pointer. He had three points. Parker Derby had 10 points. Eight of those in the first half off of back cuts and secondary help. He was big early. And then who we talked about, Trey Brown. The brute, the finesse, the shot, just the ability and the skill went for 25. Now the Bobcats on the Bobcat side, senior guard Carter Gianetto played really hard on the defensive end. He, Pope had 22, but he had to work really hard for 22, and that's because number one Carter Gianetto was in his jersey all night long. Trey Brooks, as we had mentioned, 33 points. He hit a three at the end of the first overtime to send it into the second overtime. You're going to see that right here, clearly behind the line, lined it up, knocked it in. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing because he did not even react as the crowd went crazy. And that was adding another chapter to this really crazy story tonight. But then you look at Corey Smith. He was big in the first half at eight, ended up with 12, and also a big assist late to give the Bobcats a short-lived lead. Then Rogelio Saren had two points. He struggled with foul trouble all night long and ended up fouling out in the first half. Here you see a big block by the senior when he was out there, did a really nice job on Trey. He really struggled when Rowe was on him, especially in that third quarter, but just too little, too late. Bobcats came back from a 10-point deficit in the fourth quarter to extend it into the second overtime. But it's just another heartbreaker as the Bobcats drop their fifth in a row. Uh, We are going to be able to talk to Coach Apple here coming up. But as you can understand, he's definitely taken a few extra minutes. This is a team that has worked really hard, really hard. Last night, they didn't start out real well, didn't finish, didn't start the second half very well. 
But now as we look at tonight, we got to look forward to Fort Dodge. we got to travel up off of Highway 20. Can the Bobcats get it? We're going to go to a break, and hopefully when we come back, we will have Coach Apple. You're watching the Locker Room Report here on KFJB-TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated, and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Jensen Ford. With you every mile along the way. Legends American Grill, Marshalltown Steakhouse. Lennox Employees Credit Union, LennoxECU.com. Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown, more than ever. Marshalltown Community College, a step in the right direction. As we're back, as you see things clearing out, still see that darn score up there, 69-68. A tumble over your Bobcats in double overtime. We like this game was back and forth in the late in the fourth quarter into the first and second overtime. 69-68, Bobcats fall fifth in a row. Hopefully we can get back on track on Friday. When we come back, we will talk with the head man, Coach Michael Apple. You're watching the Locker Room Report here on KFJB-TV. You planned and saved for your child to go to college. But medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Welcome back into the post game coaches interview brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services, your locally owned qualified diesel mechanics. Six periods. F the full time, Bobcats down 10 going into the fourth quarter, and really Trey Brooks took over, was able to facilitate facilitate even some wide open threes can you talk about just that dogged comeback by your cats you know we just challenged them in the locker room at halftime you know and and we got to play harder and we have to play with more purpose and and what we saw is they were switching ball screens and and so we were going to take advantage of that and basically anytime they had a big entree we was going we just told them to you know kind of run uh, run our motion offense and then drive it to the hoop and he did a really good job of that and our guys did too of, of getting them the ball and uh, I just said, until they stop them, that's what we're going to roll with. And, and uh, you know, it worked. We battled back and uh, got back in the game. In our keys to the game, I said for a tough one, who's got the best Trey? And I still don't know if we know. Is because Trey Brown was fantastic, and he ended up hitting those two last free throws to seal it for a tumble. What is a big, his size, 6'4", he's, he's big, strong, but he's also athletic. What kind of problems did he have for you tonight? Well, you just you just sat there. You know his size, and you know he's got a great touch around the rim and ability to get to his spots to get shots. 
And uh, you know that 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 was that was tough for us. That's that's always going to be a tough you know matchup for us when they got a guy like that. But uh, you know that's it, it's just we got to try and figure out ways to just make it a little harder on him to get the ball earlier on. And and he you know he catches it kind of in that mid post where he can't really front. You know mm-hmm. you know and it makes it tough. So our guys. Our guys, you know, gave effort and, and did a nice job of trying to stop him. He's just he's a he's a good player. And the effort definitely was there. Some of the shots fell late, but it does feel a little bit like Groundhog's Day in that first quarter. Yeah, getting down, not coming out, not defending at a high level, not executing on the offensive at the at the level. As a coaching staff and as a team, we know you've talked about it. Is but what's that level as you get ready for Friday to come out strong? Yeah, I think it's just understanding, you know, what, what what's a good shot and what's bad. I mean, yep. early on we take some really quick shots sometimes, you know, by good shooters. But if you're not making them, it's not it's not working, and they're getting momentum. And you know, just just breakdowns defensively that first half killed us. You know, just just things we we have to do a better job of where they're back cutting us and getting you know getting easy you know baskets to the rim where we're just breaking down, and we just have to be more solid and make them score over the top of us. And sometimes, like you said, score over top. Uh, Carter Giannetto did a really nice job on Pope, was in his jersey. Yep. Pope still scored, but that defensive yes. intensity was there at every level. When So when you get into the locker room with stuff like that, we're up here, you know, it's we're just commentating, but we're tired. We're we're bummed. What is it like in that locker room? Well, we got some we got some pretty disappointed kids right now. Obviously, they wanted to win that, you know, yeah. how we battled back and, you know, you know, when we think it's, you know, we got a last shot and we make it yeah. and those things. and, and uh, But what it comes down to, Dylan, is our execution yeah. out of timeouts. We drew some stuff up where it was basic things to get Trey to drive the ball, and we got one guy out of position every time. Mm-hmm. And we just cannot have that in those crunch situations of we need to get basket here and we don't mm-hmm. run the play the right way. So just being locked in and, and timeouts, understanding if you don't know something, ask something yep. or ask us, and we'll figure, you know, and it's – so that, that really hurt, you know, and, and, yeah. and we have to do a lot better job of in those moments executing what we want to do. And that and you said it right there. It's it's that one little piece out of, out of rhythm, yeah. out of position, and we're a good enough team that we can win some games. We're not going to overwhelm you that we can be sloppy and yeah. win games and really in the uh, five-game slip we're in right now. Well, Friday, go up to take Highway 20, and then another 47 miles off of Highway 20 to get to the Fort Dodge gym. That was a big – you got out on them early, and then they chipped away late. How can you have another big start against the Fort Dodge team? Well, I think we just can't allow them to get confidence. You know, we talk about roll guys getting easy baskets, and they had a lot of those guys do that tonight. I'm I'm sure there was a lot of roll guys that average four, maybe even less than that, have above their average, just by cutting us and getting things like that. And that's how they get confidence when they see that ball go in the hole. So – just being solid defensively, get stops, yep. take pride on that defensive end, and, and, and run our stuff and execute our offense, and we'll, we'll get really good looks. If we get Trey with that mindset he had yep. in that second half of, of being aggressive to the rim, he is very, very hard and, and you know for defenses to deal with. So yep. that's a good yep. sign. Get all our other pieces together, and we'll be, we'll be in good shape. Bobcats, Fort Dodge. We've got Friday night all have double header. Brandon's got more important – things to do for about the next week and a half thank you to coach apple tough hard fought double ot loss 69 68 atumwa over marshalltown you've been watching the post game coaching show brought to you by laurel diesel services your locally owned qualified diesel mechanics when mike overton moved to laurel iowa he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines being part of the east marshall community means ensuring that farmers truck drivers and businesses run smoothly with a large building and state-of-the-art equipment laurel diesel services is always up for a challenge when your farm trucks semis or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair take it to laurel diesel services it's Adventure On for Marshalltown Scouting. Adventures like backpacking, zip lining, rock climbing, canoeing, swimming, and more. Survival skills for a scout's greatest adventure, life. Scouts give back to the community. Marshalltown Scouts have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community in our 70-plus year history. Scout leaders are highly trained in screen. Parents are a huge part of scouting, too. Scouting provides unique opportunities available nowhere else. To learn more about scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure On. 
The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. And we're back in looking at the banners for the Conference of Champions. Bobcats have had a tough run through the Conference of Champions here recently, including tonight. Double overtime loss, 69-68. Junior big man Trey Brown gets his 24th and 25th point with 6.8 seconds left to go in the game as the Bobcats had a monumentous comeback, down 10 going into the fourth behind Trey Brooks, 33 points. Just couldn't get enough to get over the hump. Bobcats fall to 6-10. and 10. Bulldogs grow to 9-4. and four. Well, looking ahead to Friday, we got a doubleheader action for you. I'm going to get in my blue Prius with the Doze 4 plates. Go on up 35, hit 20, go north off of 20, end up at the Fort Dodge High School. We're going to get out of that car, get into the school, and Zach and I are going to go on that catwalk. I don't think Tomish has experienced the catwalk yet. He soon will. So we will be bringing you both girls and guys coverage there Friday night starting at 6 p.m. I want to give some shout outs before we get out of here. One, first and foremost, to my play-by-play partner, Brandon Lewis. He had more important things to do. All the best to him. We'll see him in a week and a half. Shout out to KFJB TV producer right to my left. That's confusing to Zach Tomish. We wish Brooksy was in the radio producer here tonight. Not there tonight as Iowa is on KFJB, but we always want to thank Jeff Brooks. And then the camera crew, really a big shout out to Jesse and Keith. Keith shot at the end of that first overtime showing clearly that Trey was behind the line for three. It was just excellent camera work. Thank you to all. Thank you for watching Bobcats Athletics. Here it is. Look at that's Keith Stewart at his finest. Got the puppy set up behind the line. Great shot by both Trey and Keith. You guys can high-five each other later. We'll be back. Coach's show Thursday night at 6 p.m. at Rosie's in Wayward. Friday night we'll be at Fort Dodge. Thank you so much. You've been watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB-TV. Today's game on KFJB-TV was brought to you by Assured Partners, Boy Scouts of America, Edward Jones, Agent Zach Wall, Ember's Retirement Community, Honest Heating and Cooling, Jensen Ford, Legends American Grill, Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown Community College, McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, Pence Appliance and TV, Wayward Social, Zeno's, Wandering Creek, Wells Fargo Advisors, Laurel Diesel Services, Calvin Rocket, your Marshalltown High V, Central State Bank. Wow.